present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Diana Day as Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in... The Tale of a Cat. Jimmy, haven't you asleep yet? It's after 11 o'clock. How can I sleep, Grandad? The rain banging on the roof, the wind howling, and the window rattling. Oh, I bet our Susan's frightened to death. Well, why didn't you get up and close the window? I couldn't. I had my head under the bedclothes. It's a good job I peeped in before I retired. With this rain, by the morning, your bed would have been floating down the stairs. Thanks, Grandad. Bye, ah, it's not a fit night for a dog to be out. As my old ship's captain used to say... Just before he sent you I on just deck. <laughs> now then, clever boy, just you get to sleep. I'll probably have a nightmare. Like the other night when it was windy, I dreamt I was being chased by wolves across the prairie. They were howling after me. Oh! Oh! It was only a dream. I know, but it didn't matter how fast I ran. They still came nearer and nearer, going, Ow! <laughs> Big white teeth. All you could see was teeth. They reminded me of you when you got your new set of choppers. <laughs> oh, get away with you, Jimmy. Anyway, never mind the wolves. Now, just lie down and try counting sheep. I'll turn off your bedside lamp for you. Good night, Grandad. Uh, good night, Jim. Sleep tight. Grandad? Yes, Jimmy? You know my pal Ozzy? He sleeps with the light on. He's scared. Ah, well, he's a bit of a baby now. Good night now. He thinks ghosts and things might come in his room. Soft, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. Now, now, off to sleep with you. Grandad? What now? When you closed the window, did you lock it? Oh, I'll lock it all right. There now. I just thought the wind might blow it up again. <laughs> it's locked now, so the brave hero can go to sleep. Good night. Ooh, he thinks I'm scared. Daft. I'm not Aussie. Oh, no school tomorrow. Smashing. <laughs> What's that? What's that? Grandad! Grandad! <coughs> Help! <laughs> oh. it's, it's a cat. <laughs> it's only a cat. <laughs> Where's the lamp? There. Oh, it must be frozen out there. Oh, you poor little thing. Push, 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 push. Come on to Jimmy then. Oh, you're soaking wet. Here, roll on the bed and get dry. Don't shake yourself on me. I, I know I'll dry you on my vest. It's Saturday tomorrow, I'll get a clean one. There you are. How's that? Hey, would you like a saucer of milk? Would you? <laughs> well, I'll go downstairs and get you one. But don't make a noise, because my mum doesn't like cats. She's scared of them. I'd better switch this light off and use my torch. Here we are. Now stay there, puss, and be quiet. <laughs> Somebody in the kitchen. No, it's the wind, I think. <laughs> Hope. Hands up! I'm a policeman! Whew, nobody there. <laughs> now, where are the saucers? Oh, here's one. Oh, heck. I'll bet our Susan washed up tonight, hanging the pans up on the floor. Now, where she put the milk? Ooh, I thought so. In the bread bin. <laughs> there we are. 
A nice saucer of milk for Kitty. What's going on there? Help! Oh, oh, oh Mum! Oh, I thought you and Grandad were burglars. Jimmy, what are you doing down here? And look at the milk on the floor and the broken so. What did you want with a saucer of milk? I, uh, I was thirsty. But why drink it out of a saucer? I like it cold. Oh, don't <laughs> talk nonsense. Let's have the truth, Jimmy. Well, I... There's your answer, Father. You daft bus, why didn't you stay upstairs? Jimmy, you know perfectly well I don't like cats, so you can just put that cat back outside where you found it. Oh, Mum, it was all wet and cold and hungry, crying in the rain, and Grandad said it wasn't fit for a dog to be out tonight, and if dogs can't go out, neither can cats, and if I put her out, she'll, she'll catch pure pneumonia and die, and, and I'll be a cat murderer, and you can't do it, Mum. Jimmy, what on earth is all that about? Now, look, Pad, it is a nasty night. What if Jimmy kept the cat in his room tonight and took it out tomorrow morning? Oh, Father, you're worse oh, than he is. Oh, please, no... Mum. All right. But it's got to be out of this house before breakfast. Mum, you're not going to send a poor cat out on an empty stomach. <laughs> Morning, Pat. Morning, Father. Paper's over there. Breakfast won't be long. Thank you, my dear. Jimmy get the cat out all right? <laughs> yes. He's just taking it out. Tears in his eyes, a sob in his throat. Made me feel like the wicked father throwing little Nell and her baby out in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, never mind. No doubt he'll forget all about it tomorrow. I'm back, Mum. Good morning, Grandad. It's a bro brach there, the new, you know. <laughs> What's happened to you? Oh, nothing. You sound very cheerful, Jimmy. Your mother said you went out crying. Oh, you mean the cat? Oh, I was upset. <laughs> but then I thought of something. Uh, I mean, um... What did you think of? Well, I uh, thought it's... Yes. Uh, <laughs> no use crying over spilt cat's milk. Now, you listen to me, Jimmy. If you're going to try oh, and... Oh, don't bother, Pat. <laughs> morning, everyone. Good morning, Susan. <laughs> morning, dear. Oh, Susan, do you have to come down to breakfast in your curlers and dressing gown? Oh, Mother, after all, it is Saturday. Is that a dressing gown? If you must know, it's a kimono. Mother, I don't want much breakfast, thank you. Just give her a bowl of chop suey. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, dear brother. Have you got rid of your cat yet, Dick Whittington? Yes, Widow Twanky. <laughs> Mum, I'm just going to phone Ozzy. Won't be long. Dick Whittington's cat came back as soon as it was needed. And mine's going to be needed. With Ozzy's help. Oh, heck. Oh, I hope he hasn't found the lump of pasta scene I put in his bag of fudge. <laughs> Hello. Is that Ozzy? Jimmy here. Your best pal. First of all, before you start on that fudge, I want it... You've eaten it? <laughs> all of it? No, I, I don't want any. Yes, I'll bet it lasted. <laughs> oh, well, if you liked it, I'll get you some more tomorrow. <laughs> but I want you to do something for me first. Lend me something for a few hours. No, not money. I want to borrow one of your tame mice. Aren't you and Jimmy going to the football match this afternoon, Father? Not this week, Pat. The first team's away. Oh, we'll just put the telly on and watch the rugby, won't we, Jimmy? 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 No more, thanks, Grandad. No more what? I've had two cups. <laughs> hey, Mum. Are you sure our Susan went up to her bedroom? Of course, she's changing to go out with Billy. What do you care, anyway? Oh, what? I don't care. Come on, Jim, come on. Now, let's go in the other room and watch the telly. Not yet, Grandad. It's too loud to hear there. I mean, I mean, it's too early. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, I'm going to switch it on it. <laughs> and I'm going to the shops. So if you stay here, you're going to be on your own. Oh, don't go just yet, Mum. What's she doing up there? What's all this about? Nothing. But why don't you wait for Susan and walk down the road with her? Uh, there's somebody at the front door. Sit down, Mum. I'll, I'll see who it is. Ah! Ah! What's going on? Oh, 
What's happened? Susan screamed at last. <laughs> Mother, there's a mouse in my room. It was in the wardrobe. A mouse. I can't bear them. She hates those misses to pieces. <laughs> Now, calm yourself. Calm yourself, Susan. Oh, and look at you coming downstairs in your underwear. Well, I was frightened. The mouse ran over my foot. And stamped on a big toe. <laughs> get out, you. All right, Susan, all right. I'll get your grandfather to go up and catch it. But first of all, I'll get a coat or something to cover you up. Come in, Mr. Craythorpe. Hello. Oh, Susan. <laughs> oh, Mr. Craythorpe. Uh, Jimmy, fancy bringing Mr. Craythorpe in here when Susan's like that. What's going on here? Susan, what are you doing? Well, I'm terribly sorry. James, you should have warned me that Susan was so bad. Put this coat on. Jimmy, I'll talk to you later. Now, what's all this creeping about? There's a mouse in Susan's room. Is that all? Well, I'll soon fix that. Here, Pat, hand me the poker. Come on, Jimmy. Wait for me. There's no need to kill it. Just find it and I'll take it back to Ozzy. So you put the mouse in Susan's wardrobe? I was just hoping that if my mum thought we had mice, she'd let me keep the cat. But you took the cat away this morning. You did take it away, didn't you? Well, um, yes and no. Jimmy, have you got that cat in your bedroom? Of course not. Where is it? In your tool shed. Oh, you're a scamp, you are. Now, when your mother... Could have... There's the mouse, Grandad, near the window. Where? There, quick, grab it. Oh, heck, it's gone out of the window. Good riddance. But it's Ozzy's. He'll make me pay him two bob, and I'm broke. But you only got your pocket money this morning. You can't have spent it all. Oh, who can't? I spent next Saturday's pocket money last Monday. <laughs> well, you'll just have to get yourself out of this. You started it all. If you hadn't tried to keep the cat... Well, the mouse is gone, Susan. You can go up and finish getting dressed now. Thank you, Grandfather. Oh, don't mention it. And the next time you're attacked by the monster from the mouse hole, just remember, send for Jungle Jim and Jock Tarzan. <laughs> you are childish. I suppose for the next week you'll be hiding behind the sofa pretending to be some big game hunter. Ooh, listen who's talking. This morning you were dressed like Madam Butterfly and this afternoon it's Lady Godiva. <laughs> Get lost, you cheeky young puppy. That'll do, Jimmy. I won't have you talking to Susan like that. Well, she started it. That's enough, my lad. We know who started it. By the way, Pat, where's Graythor? Has he gone home to hide his blushes? Oh, don't be like that, father. He's gone to borrow your wood plane from the tool shed. From the, from the tool, tool shed? shed? Oh, come on, Grandad. Before he... Oh. oh, oh, I've been attacked by a wild animal. <laughs> As I opened the shed door, it leaped at me. It was nothing but a cat. No, but it flew across the shed and spat at me. It was only trying to wash you. <laughs> That's what they do with kittens. They pick them Jimmy, up and... Where did you put that cat this morning? In... The tool shed. But, ma'am, I didn't know Mr. Craythorpe would be daft enough to go... Quiet. And... You disobeyed me, Jimmy. I didn't, ma'am. You said take it out of the house. You didn't say I had to take it out of the garden. All right. Well, this time I'm making it quite clear. Take it out of the garden, out of the street, and let it loose in the next road. Understand? Oh, ma'am, the poor little thing. No more, Jimmy. Now, come with me. Now, come on. Come on. Come along. Oh, Grandad, I didn't think you'd be cruel to the... Uh, listen, now you lost Ozzy's mouse now, didn't you? Yeah. Well, take him the cat. He'd look after it. He's fond of animals, isn't he? Yes, you're right, Grandad, he is. His father isn't, though. Funny that. Mr Higginbottom can't stand animals, yet he likes Ozzy. <laughs> You like Ozzy? His father's a bit of an old bear. Oh, but Ozzy's all right. Yes? Oh, it's you, Clitheroe. Yes, Mr. Bear. Uh, Mr. Higginbottom. <laughs> well, what are you up to? Is your Ozzy in? Yes. Uh, can he come out, please? No. Oh, shall I come in, then? No. <laughs> oh, can I shout through the door to him? No. Does he get time off for good behaviour? <laughs> no. Now na na then, now then, don't try to be clever with me. Mr Higginbottom, if he can't come out and I can't go in, will you tell me what I can do? Don't tempt me. 
Well, it's like this, Mr Higginbottom. Ozzy lent me a mouse this morning and I've lost it. So I owe Ozzy two shillings. Oh, and you've come to pay him, have you, lad? Well, that's all right, son. Uh, give it to me. I'll put it in his money box. I haven't got it. Well, go and get it, you little twerp. <laughs> oh, listen, I lost his mouse, so I've brought him a cat. What for? So he can lose the rest of his mice? I didn't pay two bob each for white mice to feed your cat. He could train it just to catch the rats. <laughs> and what makes you think we've got rats in our house? Don't tempt me. <laughs> what? Uh, doesn't it tempt you, the cat? Couldn't I just have a word with Ozzy? No, you can't. And if you must know, he's in bed. He came home from the dentist feeling a bit sick. Why, did he have gas? No, I swallowed the cotton wool pad. <laughs> he didn't anything. Cotton wool, plasticine. You should call him Ozzy the Ostrich. All right, all right, that's enough. Now clear off, you and your cat. All right. Come on, puss, back to the tool shed. No, we'd better make it the greenhouse this time. Just till Monday and then I'll take you to school and see if one of the lads will have you. To the door. Don't forget. You still owe our Ozzy too, Bob. Well, if I can't raise the money, I'll bring him something to eat. Two bobs worth of bran mash. <laughs> Is tea ready, ma'am? Not yet. It's only quarter past four. And keep your voice down. Grandad's having a nap. I thought he was watching telly. <laughs> the match finished at four, and by five past, he was driving the pigs home. <laughs> there goes Father Pig through the gate. <laughs> And the kids. <laughs> Has the paper come yet, Mum? Yes, here it is. Oh, and after you've read the comic strip, fold it up properly. Your granddad likes to have his paper tidy. <laughs> Chuck the gate, he's got the last pig on. <laughs> Get in there! What's that? What's that? Pinky and Perky were a bit late. <laughs> Jimmy, I told you to be quiet. Oh, oh, I was nearly off there. Nearly off? You were snoring that loud, you, you've had the pictures off the wall twice. <laughs> Don't take any notice, Father. Anyway, you'd have had to be up in a minute. I'm just going to start on the tea. That the evening's paper, Jimmy. Yes, Grandad, but it's my turn this week. You had the comic page first last Saturday. Now, I'm going to wash my hands, and when I come down, I want my paper neatly folded as well. Ooh, sorry, Grandad. Ah. Ooh, what's wrong with him? Jimmy, has the paper come yet? Yes, it has, and I've got it, so you've had it. <laughs> the queue starts over there. You're only reading the comic page. Let me see the cinema ad that's on page two. Come on, hand it over. As soon as I've finished. Give me that paper. I won't. Let go or you'll tear it. You let go. Now you've done it, Grandan will go mad. You tore it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I've still got the half with the pictures in. <laughs> you did have it. Who cares? This is the best half with the comics and the personnel column in it. Personal column, you ignoramus. What you want with that? Oh, it's smashing. All mysterious messages like, uh, P, meet you at F, love M. <laughs> Just listen to this. Come home, son, all is forgiven. I've found your father's teeth behind the clock. <laughs> Where does it say that? <laughs> Nowhere. Ozzy told me that one. <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? I bet there's some good ones, though. Uh, jump and jive at the dive to the world's greatest bands. Admission ninepence, including refreshments. <laughs> One pound reward. Lost. Black cat with two white paws. Two white paws? <laughs> Wait a minute. A pound reward? What's that number? 7643. Susan, I'm just going to make a phone call. Just a 
minute. Uh, you are Mrs. Clitheroe, aren't you? Uh, yes, this is the house, and we did have a cat that answered to that description. But it's not here now, you see. Um, oh, Jimmy, come here a minute, will you? Yes, ma'am. This lady has called about the cat you found. Oh, good. Well, if you'll and just... And I've explained to her how Grandad told you to take it to Ozzy's. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, and did you take it there? If my son is told to do something, he does it. Don't you? Yes, of course, ma'am. Uh, I did take it round to Ozzy's. Well, where is uh, Ozzy's, did you call it? Oh, you won't find it there. Why not? Uh, I mean, uh, Ozzy will have taken it out for a walk. Look, I'll go round and get the cat for you. Oh, no, no, I'd rather go myself. Then I can give him the reward personally. Oh, heck. Their name is Higginbottom. It's just round the corner. I'll and come with you and show you where it is. Oh, that's very nice of you. Good, but come on. To... Ta-da, Mum. Huh, that was a sudden exit. But it's incredible, Mr. Sinclair, that they should be coming up so early. Oh, did you want to pass, Mrs. Clitheroe? No, 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 you sit where you are, Theodore. Listen, they're not just coming up. They're nearly in full bloom. Here, come on out to the greenhouse and I'll show you. Well, how do you account for it? Well, it's all a matter of careful preparation. Now, as soon as the summer is there... <laughs> but your mother distinctly said you'd taken Kitty Never the... mind that, missus. I tell you, she's in the greenhouse. You come and collect her and then I collect the reward, don't I? Certainly, if it is Kitty... But I feel there's something strange going on here. Here's the I... greenhouse. You'll soon... Oh, Mr. Craythorpe, don't open the door. <laughs> hey, I'll give you that again. <laughs> that blinking cat. He's gone. That was Kitty. You frightened her away, you wicked, wicked man. Take that. Oh, no. Oh, Dad, have you got that? What's the idea? That's what I want to know. You were obviously trying to steal my cat. If this dear boy hadn't told me, I'd have gone away without knowing you had Kitty imprisoned. Jimmy, you're going to be sorry for this. Uh, don't you dare attack the boy for being honest. Well, I have to go home now. But unless you find Kitty and return her before dark, I shall call the police. I warn you, you thieves. Now, look here, Mrs. Oh, she's away. Jimmy. Come here. You'd better get after that cat and bring it back. It was Mr. Craythorpe who let it out. If he answered... Quiet! No, no, he's right in a way. Uh, James, come along. I'll help you to search. Uh, thanks, Mr. Craythorpe. And we'd better find it quick. And we'll all be in jail as cat burglars. <laughs> well, we won't catch it by talking. Now, come along. Put your best foot forward. Oh, oh, James, I, I can't keep this pace up. I must have a rest. If we don't find that cat, you'll get about five years rest in Dartmoor. <laughs> I wasn't entirely to blame. After all... Who the... let the cat out? Well, I did, but... When the... I put it safely in the greenhouse to protect it for the woman. Oh, I say that's hardly... Quiet! Fa How dare you tell me... Shh, to get... I've seen it. There, on the roof of that shed. Where? There! There's a ladder near it. Come on. Uh, yes, but James, you must be careful you don't fall off that ladder. I won't fall off. Uh, good. I'm going to hold it for you. <laughs> now, don't dash at it. Come on. Well, now, hold it steady. Uh, here I go. Uh, now, now keep, keep calm, pussy. Psst, 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 psst. Uh, Uncle Theodore will rescue. Nice, pussy. Puss, 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 puss. Oh, oh, James, help! Oh, Oh, my back. Mr. Craythorpe, oh. don't move. The cat's just near your hand. When she sniffs, grab her. Now! Got your, 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 your feet. Dear, uh, what are you doing? Let go of my cat, you thieving old thing. Let go of Blackie. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, heck, Mr. Craythorpe. You've pinched the wrong moggy. <laughs> Mr. Craythorpe, Mum will give you an aspirin. Uh, thank you, James. Theodore, what's happened to you? He grabbed hold of our cat, only it wasn't ours. And the old cat who owned it belted him. <laughs> uh, it, it's quite all right, Mrs. Clitheroe. It's just a flesh wound. Uh, but I'm afraid we couldn't find the cat. I know. Two minutes after you left, it came back here. Father's taking it round to its owner. Well, I want the reward. After all, I kept it... You'll get your reward, all right, my lad. A darn good spanking, that's what you'll get.
Well, that's that. Oh, you're back, are you? I'm sorry, Mum and Grandad, but I was only trying to help a poor lost cat that came in out of the rain and he was a fit night for a dog to be turned out. All right, Never all mind right. The we know. The Jimmy, have you cleaned your teeth? Yes, Mum. Right now, then. Settle down. That's a good boy. Come on. Oh. Good night, Mum. I'm, I'm sorry I was naughty. <laughs> All right, son. Forget it. Come on now. Get off to sleep. There's a good boy. I'll just close your window. It's starting to rain again. Thanks, Mum. Night, Mum. Good night, son. See you in the morning. Oh, oh, what a weekend. Oh, no. Not again. Oh, don't some cat's mothers have them? <laughs> In that recording of the Clitheroe Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Diana Day, Rosalie Williams and Tony Melody. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The program was written and produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I thought I'd come back and tell you everything's all right now. Mum's got used to kitty visiting us on stormy nights and the lady who owns her gives me two bob every time I take her back. If the bad weather keeps up, I'm going to buy a bike. <laughs> His dad was mad when he found out. I went round to pay him the two bob I owed Ozzy, and I said, uh, Mr. Higginbottom, um, I hope you can change a pound note. <laughs> I'm afraid it's the smallest I've got. <laughs> Ta -da. We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Diana Day as Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in... Clitheroe's Merry-Go-Round. Jimmy! Jimmy, you want it on the phone? It's your friend, Ozzy. He's no friend of mine. He got me the cane yesterday. How? He knocked his desk over in art class. Well, why did you get the cane? I put the drawing pin on his seat. <laughs> well, you deserve to get the cane. Anyway, go on, go on and speak to him. All right, I'll speak to him. Hello, is that Blabbermouth? <laughs> well, you needn't have told the teacher it was my drawing pin you sat on. You could have said you got cramp. <laughs> you what? You can get cramp anywhere. <laughs> no, I don't want to go to the fair with you and your dad. Aunt Susan's taking me. I hope I do see you there. I'll throw a wooden ball at your head. <laughs> Why not? You've got your hair cut like a coconut. <laughs> oh, that's different. All right, we'll be friends. If you pay for two rides on the dodgems, three shots at the crazy kitchen, and a trip down the tunnel of love. No. So we can get in the boat behind our Susan and Billy Parker. <laughs> of course Billy's coming with us. He's here with her now. They're in the garden. I can see them through the window. Hey, <laughs> They're going in the greenhouse. <laughs> I must see this. Hang on a minute, Ozzy. Are you still there, Ozzy? I've got me granddad's telescope. Jimmy! Jimmy, will you finish that phone call and come here? Right, old mum. I'll have to go now, Ozzy. Me mum's shouting for me. ta -ra. Is it tea time, mum? Because I'm not very hungry. I'm not surprised. This morning I bought a pound of grapes which cost me six shillings. Well, they were worth it. I tasted them. I know you did. 
There's about half a pound left in this bag. Well, you and Grandad eat them. I've had enough. <laughs> Look, we were taking these grapes to the hospital tonight for your Aunt Ethel. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. If I'd known the grapes were for me Auntie Ethel, I'd have been satisfied with just the pears. <laughs> oh, so the pears have gone as well, have they? Well, there was only three. Little ones. Oh, it's my own fault. I should have hidden them. I'll just have to take these few grapes and the two oranges in the pantry. One orange, ma'am. <laughs> oh, no. Jimmy. Mother, Billy had to go home. He couldn't stay for tea. He's coming back for me and Jimmy at quarter to six. I hope he brings his motorbike. Then he can take you for a pillion ride on the wall of death. Don't be ridiculous. Why not? I saw a fella on the pictures do it with a monkey on the back. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. Every time you come round, I'll throw you a nut. <laughs> if you had any nuts, you'd eat them yourself, along with the grapes, oranges and the pears you've had. You know, you're just a walking fruit salad. Oh, Mum, can't you let the fruit drop? It's giving me the pip. <laughs> Has he been scoffing all the fruit again? Oh, you can talk. What about Billy Parker? Tomato chops. <laughs> I saw you taking him into the greenhouse to feed him up. Oh, did you? So you've been spying on us again. Well, I wasn't spying on... It, it was an accident. I left my telescope on the telephone table. I'm sorry for spying on you, Susan. <laughs> sorry? With a telescope? You peeping, Tom. Well, that settles it. You're not going with us to the fairground tonight. You what? We were only going to the fair to please you. So now Billy can take me to the dance. Oh, Susan, it, it was only a joke. We're going to the dance. All right, go to the dance. I hope you get cramp in the cha-cha. <laughs> All right, all right, it's no use you losing your temper. It's your own fault that you're not going to the fair. Not going? Oh, Grandad will take me, won't you? Oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, uh, I'm going to the hospital with your mother to see your Aunt Ethel. Oh, can't you go on your own, ma'am? You've only got one orange and half a bag of grapes to carry. <laughs> look, look, we promised your auntie she's ill, and the two of us promised that we'd go and see her. Well, let's all go to the fair when you come back. We're leaving here at six and we won't be back till eight o'clock. Your bedtime. Can't you go with anyone else, Jimmy? That's it. Of course. Ozzy and his dad wanted to take me. I'll go around and see Mr Higginbottom. All right, but if he does take you, behave yourself. You know it doesn't take you five minutes to upset him. Oh, I'll be good, ma'am. And here's half a crown to spend. Oh, thanks, Grandad. Mum gave me three bob. That's five and six I've got. I'll get it, Mother. Now, Jimmy. If you go to the fair, you've got to be back by eight. Don't worry, Pat. Five and six won't last him more than two hours. <laughs> it's Mr Higginbottom. Will you go in? Hello, Mr Higginbottom. Hello. Young Jimmy was just coming down to see you. Was he? Well, I've just come round to see him. Yes, I was going to ask you if you'd take me to the fair tonight with Ozzy. You destructive little whelp. Have a good mind to belt your lug on. Now, just a minute, Higginbottom. <laughs> Not so much of the will. How dare you come in here threatening my son? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Clitheroe, but you can't blame me for losing my temper. I get home five minutes ago and find Ozzy's plastic mac hanging in the hall, torn to ribbons. Well, that wasn't my fault. Blame Ozzy. He shouldn't have such a big head. Now listen here. Just a minute. <laughs> Jimmy, explain what you mean. Well, Ozzy wanted to play blind man's buff on roller skates. You must be mad. That's what I told Ozzy. I said it's too dangerous. So I suggested we had a quiet game of bullfights. But when Ozzy was the bull, he overdid it. He started pawing the ground and snorting. I waved his mac at him. He charged like mad and got his head stuck up the sleeve. <laughs> if we hadn't ripped the mac to get him out, he'd have suffocated. Look, never mind all this rubbish. You've ripped Ozzy's mac. And it cost me 15 bob. Well, Mr Higginbottom, I think they were both to blame. Well, of course they were. Look, I'll tell you. We'll pay for half the damage. Now, here's seven and sixpence. All right. But the next time you come round, I'll teach you to play a new game. Pitch and toss. I'll pitch you out of the door and toss you over the fence. <laughs> oh. Quarter past six. 
Because he'll have had a packet of popcorn, two hot dogs and a ride on the ghost train to frighten the ghosts. <laughs> and I'm stuck here at home. <sighs> Who's that? Hey, perhaps Mr Higginbottom's changed his mind. Hello, James. Oh, Mr Craythorpe, it's you. Well, that's not a very nice welcome. I'm sorry, Mr Craythorpe. I should think so. May I come in? Yes, come into the funhouse and have a good cry. <laughs> oh, dear. I say, talking about the funhouse, I thought you would have been at the fairground tonight. So did I, but they've all gone out and there's nobody to take me. Uh, come in, Mr Craythorpe. I am glad to see you. Oh, well, that's nice, huh? Your mother's out, is she? Yes, yeah, she and Grandad wanted to take me to the fair, but I made them go and see me auntie in hospital. Oh, did you? Yes, and I know Susan wanted to take me, but I said Billy had sooner go dancing. And then Mr Higginbottom asked if I'd go with him, but I said no, because I'd sooner go with you. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Mr Craythorpe, I want to treat you to the fair. Well, uh, that's very nice of you. <laughs> but I've got no money, so I'll let you take me. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know about that, James. Well, I had five and six, but Grandad got that off me to help pay for a Mac for Ozzy. Pay for a Mac for Ozzy? Yes, well, Higginbottoms are only a poor family, you know. <laughs> well, I must say, after all the good deeds you've done, you deserve a trip to the fairground. Well, come on, let's be off. No, uh, no I'm afraid I can't take you, really. I'm busy preparing the annual accounts for the Women's Guild. That's why I wanted to see your mother. Well, you can see her at eight o'clock. She'll be back then, and I'll help you with your sums. <laughs> well, I suppose I could, and I must admit the thought of a fairground appeals to me. I haven't been to one since I was a boy. Yes, I'll take you in the car. It'll be quite a change for me. Oh, look, Mr Craythorpe. There's Ozzy and Mr Higginbottom. Wave to them the next time we come round. I couldn't, James. The way this hobby horse is going up and down, I daren't let go of the pole. Well, it's your own fault for riding side saddle. <laughs> oh, that was smashing, wasn't it? I'll bet you're glad you came on the Big Dipper after all, aren't you, Mr Craythorpe? <laughs> Mr. Craythorpe? Mr. Craythorpe? Oh, heck, he's fainted! Well, James, I've enjoyed it in a way, but I'm glad you decided to leave so early. We have to leave now. It's half past seven, and if I'm not back by eight o'clock, you'll be in trouble. What for? For taking me to the fairground where my mum said I couldn't go. <laughs> James, that was very dishonest. Well, it hasn't hurt anybody, and you've had more fun than you would have had with the Women's Guild. <laughs> that is not the point, James. If anything stopped me getting you home in time, I'd be in trouble with your mother. There's nothing can stop us getting home in time. Is this your car, sir? Except this copper. <laughs> uh, yes, Constable. Uh, uh, is anything amiss? Yes, sir. I've been here for nearly an hour and a half watching your car. Oh, Mr. Craythorpe, give him a bob and let's go. <laughs> uh, quiet, James. Uh, is this a restricted zone, then? Well, the fur's on it is, sir. Oh. You can see our temporary no parking signs. Well, at least you can see one of them. The other one's under your back wheel. <laughs> Uh, oh, dear. Uh, uh, does this mean you're going to arrest me? No, no, but it is an offence, sir. Still, I'm prepared to overlook it this time, but don't let it happen again. Oh, I assure you, I shall be most careful not to transgress again. Oh, just as a matter of form, sir. Could I see your driving licence and insurance? Oh, oh, certainly. Here you are. Here's my insurance, and here's my... Uh, oh, <laughs> Oh, dear. I, I'm afraid the licence is in my other suit. Well, I shall have to report that, sir. But provided you produce it at the police station within five days, it'll be all right. It's a good job you don't want his TV licence, because he hasn't got one. <laughs> James. <laughs> he means I haven't got a television set. <laughs> what was the name, sir? Uh, Theodore Craythorpe. How do you spell it? It's easy. A T and a H and a H and a H and a door. And a K and a R. All right. I'll manage. So you 
have been here since quarter past six, Theodore. Well, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, th that was the, the time I arrived. Oh. So you uh, you weren't on your own, Jimmy? Uh, no, Mr. Craythorpe, don't be... Uh, stayed with me. I'm sorry I was out, Theodore. You have had a long wait here. Oh, it didn't seem long to us. We had a smashing time. Except when Mr. Craythorpe fainted on the big... Uh, big uh, easy chair. <laughs> fainted? Uh, I, I didn't... I didn't actually faint. I came over a little weak uh, uh, with the heat. Well, we haven't had a fire on all day. Uh, uh, no, but uh, I'm still wearing my winter underwear. <laughs> Jimmy, you didn't get Mr. Craythorpe playing any silly games, did you? No, we didn't play anything. Were you watching television, then? Yes. No. What? <laughs> well, uh, I was going to watch Laramie, but Mr. Craythorpe doesn't like cowboys. It's the way the horses go up and down. It makes him feel sick. Uh, uh, Mrs. Clitheroe, uh, could we discuss the Women's Guild? Well, I'd rather leave it till tomorrow, Theodore. I've got a lot of baking to do, you know. You're coming to lunch, aren't you? Oh, yes, that's very kind of you. I'll come straight here from the police station. I mean... The police station? Uh, uh, yes, I, I've got to go there to show them my driving licence. Yes, he hadn't got his licence and his car was stuck on a no-parking sign outside... Uh, outside of uh, their house. You mean he stopped you parking outside your own house? Uh, well, it's a restricted zone now, apparently, and uh, I think I'd better go home. Uh, I mean, my sister's waiting for me to put my foot in it. Uh, 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 I'd better put my best foot forward and get home. Yes, good night, Mr. Craythorpe. Uh, yes, uh, good night, James. Good night, Mrs. Clitheroe, Mr. Sinclair. Good night. Good night, Susan. Oh, oh, she's not here. Are you sure you're all right, Theodore? Oh, yes, yes, I, at least I will be as soon as I get out of here. Uh, get home. Uh, good morning. Good night. <laughs> Theodore, sit down there, near the fire. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Clitheroe. Lunch will only be five minutes. But doesn't Mr. Sinclair usually sit here? Oh, no, 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 that's all right. Here's the Sunday paper, if you haven't read it. Oh, thank you. No, I haven't read it. As a matter of fact, my sister doesn't approve of this particular one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all those pin-up girls, I think. Well, there's nothing wrong with a pretty girl in a bathing costume. <laughs> oh, no, I'm all for it. Uh, I mean... Uh... <laughs> Tommy's doing a war dance. Hey, Mr. Craythorpe, that's my granddad's chair. Jimmy, don't be cheeky. Mr. Craythorpe's our guest and he can sit where he likes. Is lunch ready, Pat? Oh, Craythorpe. You comfortable in that chair? With the paper? Yes, thank you, Mr. Sinclair. You uh, wouldn't like me to send Jimmy upstairs for my carpet slippers, would you? Father, <laughs> will you please try to behave yourself? Anyway, Theodore, I'm surprised to see you still at liberty. Uh, what do you mean? Well, Susan said that when she was coming home from a church, she saw you going into the police station. <laughs> I didn't think they'd let a desperate character like you out again. Well, as a matter of fact, I had quite an experience there. I, I was rather disturbed at first, and then, then I saw the funny side of it. Well, what do you mean, Theodore? <laughs> well, I went to show them my driving license, and I was talking to that sergeant, um, Harrison. And he was telling me that a lady had had her handbag snatched, and they, they were holding an identification parade. They had this ugly brute whom they suspected, and they were bringing people in from the street to stand beside him. <laughs> then he asked me if I'd take part, so, of course, well, I said yes. <laughs> but imagine my horror when the lady picked me out. <laughs> You're joking, Theodore. No, no, I'm not. She pointed her finger straight at me and said, that's the thieving rat. Lock him up. <laughs> and you mean you've escaped? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The sergeant realised that it was a mistake. Oh, we had a jolly good laugh over it. <laughs> Fancy thinking I was the cosh boy. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Theodore. Well, you... Father, stop teasing. You see, it just shows how mistakes can happen, though. The man is probably nothing like you. I'll see who's at the door, Mother. All right. Ozzy told me they were going to arrest his dad once just for being asleep. What, in bed? No, in the gutter. <laughs> Oh, who is it? Sergeant Harrison. Oh, come in, Sergeant. Thank you, miss. 
I'm uh, sorry to disturb you on that Sunday, but your sister said I'd find you here, Mr. Craythorpe. Oh, yes. I suppose the lady's changed her mind now, has she? Well, no. As a matter of fact, she hasn't. Oh. And I've had orders to ask you for some particulars. Would you like to see the sergeant alone, Theodore? Oh, no, no. I have nothing to hide. Now, how can I help you, sergeant? Well, sir, I realise I'm wasting my time, but the super insists I get a statement of your movements yesterday. Oh, well, that's easy. I can remember what I was doing every minute of the day. Sure. Well, would you just tell me where you were between six and eight last night? Uh, certainly. I was... Mr. Uh, Craythorpe! Uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, no, I'm afraid I can't tell you. You mean you don't remember after all? Oh, yes, yes, I remember, but I just can't say at the moment. Well, I don't think the super will be satisfied with that, sir. Uh, no, quite. Well, look, uh, could I just speak to you in the hall? Certainly, sir. Uh, excuse us a moment. What was the matter with him? Why didn't he tell the sergeant he was here with Jimmy while we were at the hospital? Well, he's embarrassed. He'll be telling him now. I mean, Jimmy was... Jimmy, come away from that keyhole. I was just wondering how much he's telling him. Uh, I mean, what he's telling him. Just wait in the hall, sir. It shouldn't take a minute. Did any of you see Mr. Craythorpe between six and eight last night? I did, Sergeant. Yes, we were out till eight o'clock, you see. Mr. Craythorpe came here at quarter past six and stayed with Jimmy till we got back. Is that so? Was he here with you all the time, Sonny? Well, he wasn't here all the time. He was sort of up and down and round about. <laughs> Just as a matter of interest, Sonny, did you go to the fairground at all last week? Um, me? Well, I was going yesterday, but... Me mum and granddad wouldn't let me, would you? No, that, that's why we were very pleased when Mr. Craythorpe said he'd been in the house all the time with Jimmy. Oh, he said that, did he? Thank you. Well, excuse me, I just want to have another word with Mr. Craythorpe. Well, Sergeant? Not well at all, sir. I'm afraid they don't corroborate your statement. They say you were here all the time and the boy didn't go to the fair. <laughs> well, of course they'd say that. We didn't tell them we'd been to the fair so the boy wouldn't get into trouble. But I do Mr. assure you... Mr. Craythorpe, I advise you to think this matter over and come down to the station later to make a statement. <laughs> but I assure you, there's no necessity... I now. wouldn't say any more now, sir. Take my advice. Think it over carefully. And consult a solicitor. <laughs> You told me this at home, Sonny. Mr. Craythorpe wouldn't have had to bring you to the police station. Oh, well, I couldn't tell you at home. I didn't want to get into trouble because I wanted Mr. Craythorpe to tell me which story we were using. <laughs> James, what are you saying? Uh, just a minute, sir. Sonny, I suppose Mr. Craythorpe talked to you before you came down here. Oh, yes, he told me you, you didn't believe him, so I had to come to the police station and say we were both at the fair. He told you to say that? Yes. James, you're not explaining this properly. Well, I'm doing my best. I told him everything you said. James, I didn't tell you to say these things. Yes, you did. When you got me in the hall, you said, he won't take any notice of me. Maybe the silly old fool will believe you. <laughs> Sergeant, I assure you, the boy doesn't realise what he's saying. I'm sorry, sir. I can't accept this evidence. I must make further inquiries. I've uh, got some other business to attend to now, so I'll leave you to think it over. But in the meantime, I shouldn't leave town if I were you. What's the matter with him? He still thinks I committed the crime. But how could you? He said it was at seven o'clock and, and I was on the fairground with you. I know that. I remember the town hall clock striking seven. Just I was going into the funhouse. Uh, hey, you stayed outside. <laughs> well? You could have pinched the woman's handbag, you know. <laughs> you know very well I didn't. I believe you. But will the judge? <laughs> There's only one way to settle this. That woman was mistaken, and I'm going to make her admit it. Mr. Craythorpe, you're not going to cosh her again, are you? <laughs> James, I'll cosh you in a moment. Now, just be quiet. Um, uh, uh, what did the sergeant say her name was? Um, Mrs. Leggett, 21, Grow 
Grosvenor Road. That's it. I'll go at once, and you're coming with me. I'm sorry to be so insistent, Mrs. Leggett, but are you sure that was the man? He doesn't look the type to me. I'm positive. I'd know that face anywhere. Well, you admit the light wasn't very good. You could have been mistaken. Well, I'm not. Mm, just a minute while I answer the door. Police, the way they keep on you, think I was a criminal instead of the victim. Ah, <laughs> I found you. Oh, keep away from me, you villain. Look, madam, I'm just about the end of my patience. If you don't tell the police you're mistaken about me, you'll be in serious trouble. That's telling them, Mr. Craythorpe. Don't you threaten me. Sergeant Harrison, come here quick. Uh, uh, who did you say? He's the sergeant. Make her tell him. Twist her arm. Yeah, what's going on here? What are you doing here, Mr. Craythorpe? Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. Threatening me. He says if I don't say I'm mistaken, I'll be for it. Uh, I, I did not. I said you'd be in trouble. You're the one who's in trouble, and you're getting deeper every minute. Look, if I committed the crime, where's the evidence? Where is the handbag? The police have got the handbag, as you know. You threw it behind the bushes after you'd taken the pound that was in it. Listen, sir. Every time you open your mouth, you make things worse for yourself. He's right, Mr. Craythorpe. There's only one thing to do. What's that? Give the woman a pound back and let's go home. <laughs> If there's one thing I like, it's high tea on a Sunday. <laughs> Would you like this last piece of apple pie, Father? Oh, no thanks. I just couldn't eat another bite. How about you, Susan? No thanks, Mother. What do you... Yes, uh... please. <laughs> You've had two already, you little hog. If you eat any more, you'll burst. All right, just pass the plate and stand well back. <laughs> Your table manners. I'd be ashamed to take you anywhere decent. Well, we're not anywhere decent. We're at home. Thanks very much. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean, ma'am. There's just us, no visitors. Yes, a strange Theodore hasn't come in for his tea as well. I think he's practising for when they put him on bread and water. <laughs> That's not funny, Jimmy. Mr. Craythorpe's very upset. Didn't they get it all cleared up when you went to the police station? Don't ask me, Father. Jimmy says he told them what happened. <laughs> yes, and they didn't believe him. They probably know what a little fibber he is. Me? A fibber? You can talk. The lies you tell your boyfriends. One rings up and you've just washed your hair. Another calls at the door and you have a headache. And all the time you've got Billy Parker in the front room waiting to start smooching. <laughs> Shut up! Uh, I hope you don't mind me coming in the back way, but it's important. <laughs> What's the good of minding you're already in? Hello, Mr Higginbottom. What is it? Something the matter with Ozzy? There's nothing wrong with Ozzy. That a good bath won't get rid of. <laughs> It's to do with Craythorpe. We're aware of Mr. Craythorpe's trouble and we don't wish to gossip about it. Well, he's not in trouble. They know he didn't attack the woman. I told him. So you were the ugly brute who coshed her. <laughs> I'll have mean... your look all yet. Uh, quiet, Jimmy. Uh, what, what happened? I told him I saw Craythorpe. I saw him half a dozen times between six and half past seven. You weren't here last night. No, neither was Craythorpe. He was at the fairground for over an hour with that brat of yours. What? Is this true, Jimmy? Jimmy! Jimmy! I'll find him. Uh, he'll feel the weight of my hand. Jimmy, where are you? What are you doing on that phone? Uh, 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 hello, Sergeant Harrison. Jimmy Clitheroe here. Come quick. I think I'm going to need police protection. <laughs> In that recording of the Clitheroe Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Diana Day, Tony Melody, Brian Truman, Betty Olberge, and Alan Rothwell. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The programme, which was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe and produced by James Casey, starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I, um, I thought you'd like to know everything was sorted out. The police got the right man, Mr. Craythorpe got an apology from the woman, and I got Grandad's slipper on me, you know what. <laughs> Still, it was worth it to go on the roundabouts. So I didn't cry. Mr. Craythorpe said I was a little hero, and he'll take me to the fairground next year. Then he cracked one of his horrible jokes. He said, after all, the brave deserve the fair. No. <laughs> no,
we present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Diana Day as Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in... All at Sea. Adapted by John Carrington and produced by Charles Fremantle. Next week's episode of Treasure Island is entitled Long John Silver's Revenge. Oh, smash it, won't it? All right, Jimmy, switch it off now. Right, Mum. Thank goodness, Mother. I'm fed up of having my tea every Thursday to the noise of pirates yelling, guns booming and yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of rum. <laughs> oh, Susan, it's not that bad. Listen, who's talking? What about those horrible records you and your boyfriends play? Dig this, rock that. <laughs> I put custard in my head. Why? Because I'm stupid. <laughs> For once, dear brother, I agree with you. You're stupid. No, no, no. Stop bickering, both of you. Both of us? I didn't start it. It was jukebox Jennifer here. That'll do, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mother. I ought to have realised that pirates would appeal to his childish mind. Oh, Jimmy, am I too late for Treasure Island? Yes, Grandad, it's just finished. Oh, I was looking forward to this week's instalment. Oh, that's because it appeals to your childish mind. What? Oh, Susan said it was. Did you, Susan? I meant Jimmy. It's all right, Father. Don't you try and cause trouble, Jimmy. You're wasting your time talking to that delinquent. Go on, blame me. I wish I was a pirate. I'd splice a main brace for her. <laughs> hey, Grandad, when you were in the Merchant Navy, did you fight any pirates? Oh, no, son. Piracy was stamped out long ago, about 1830. I could hardly be fighting pirates in 1830 now, could I? Oh, no, you'd be too young to fight them. <laughs> it must have been great, though. I wish I'd been Jim Hawkins with Long John Silver. Arr! Avast there, you swabs! Jimmy! Arr! Jim lad, Billy! Fine patch! He's me best cut and thrust man! I will score these living livers! <laughs> will you stop it, Jimmy? So be it, Miss Purity. <laughs> well, all right, Skipper, now heave to. You just steer the course for that table and get on with your homework. I'll make some tea, Father. Right, Mum. It won't take me half an hour. We've only got sums to do, Grandad. Oh, have we? Yes, I'll show you. Here we are. Uh, it's a, a walking problem. Mr X leaves point A at one o'clock to cycle to B. He rides... Now, take it easy, take it easy. Now, now, Jimmy, these things are quite simple. If you take them step by step. Now, leave Z at one. Now, go on. He rides at 12 mph for 20 minutes, but as the wind increases, he gets off the bicycle and walks for 40 minutes. The wind then drops slightly, and he rides for 30 minutes at 10 mph to arrive at B. Uh-huh. Well, how far is it from A to B is the question. No, it says, if A to B is 11 miles, at what speed did he walk? Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well... Well... Yes, Grandad. Yeah, I think you ought to do this yourself now, really. You mean you can't? <laughs> of course I could, but, oh, well, I just don't want to. Go on, force yourself. <laughs> Look, if a boy has all his work done by somebody else, he'll grow up knowing nothing. Who used to do yours, then? My father. What? <laughs> that does it. Just for your cheek, I won't help you tonight or any other night. Oh, Clitheroe, you and your big mouth. 12 miles per hour, then walks, then rides at 10 miles per hour. Oh, why the heck couldn't he take a bus? <laughs> How's it going, Jimmy? Backwards. Mum, <laughs> can you help me a bit? All right, so let's see. 12 miles an hour. Yeah. Walks for 40 minutes. 10 miles an hour. Uh, um, uh, 12 miles an hour, then walk. All right, but... Mum, don't bother. It's no wonder I'm no good at sums. What do you mean? Well, look at the family I come from. <laughs> oh, you're cheeky. Anyway, I haven't got time to help you. I'm expecting Mr Craythorpe and... Oh, uh, Mr... he'll help me. He can't. Yes, he can. Mr Craythorpe's smashing at sums. And he owes me something for teaching him to play blow football. Blow football? Yes. Mine is too slow. 
every time I scored before he got the shooter to his lips. I put five in his goal and three in his mouth. I think he does owe you something. Anyhow, he can't help you because he's bringing Mrs. Billington with him. Oh, heck, what's Beaky Billington coming for? <laughs> to see me about the Women's Guild, and don't you call her Beaky. That's what everybody calls her. When she comes, you just behave yourself. Don't worry, I won't even look at a conk. <laughs> but somebody's got to help me with me homework. Oh, Mother, have you seen my white belt, please? It's in that drawer there, Susan. Where you left it. Oh, thanks, Mother. I forgot. Oh, shall I answer the door, Mother? No, no, no. It'll be for me. Mrs. Billington likes to be greeted at the front door. Susan, that dress, it, it looks lovely. What? Well, it's not just the dress, it's the way you wear it. Oh, you ought to be on telly. <laughs> What's come over you? You made it yourself, didn't you? Yes. What about it? There you are. You're clever with it. <laughs> you can make dresses, cook meals, do sums. Sums? You what? I can do sums. Oh, good. Well, you can do one for me. <laughs> If Mr. X oh, rides... Oh, no, you don't. I'm not doing any sums. Oh, but, Susan, you're my sister. My pretty sister. If you want your homework doing, you'll have to find another mug. All right, scraggy neck. That's what you ought to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> find another mug. The one you've got's horrible. Oh. One of these days, I'll smack your face so hard you'll... Susan. Susan. What is all this? I think something's upset her. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mother, but he drives me mad. What started all this, Jimmy? I just said I like to dress and she doesn't know. Oh, really? Well, I think it's a lovely dress, Susan. Careful, yeah. Mr. Craythorpe. She's in an ugly mood. <laughs> Jimmy, that's quite enough from you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about this, Mrs. Billington and Theodore. Oh, that's quite all right. <laughs> oh, please don't worry on my account, Mrs. Clitheroe. I think I'll go upstairs. I apologise to all of you. We forgive you. Jimmy, come on. Come into the kitchen and help me carry in the tea things. Right, old mum. Mr Creethop, while we're out, here's something to read. Oh, thank you, James. Uh, Mr X leaves point A at one o'clock. Jimmy, I told you not to bother Mr Creethop while Mrs Billington's here. All right. Uh, Mrs Be uh, Billington? Yes, boy? How long are you stopping? Oh, I beg you. Jimmy, uh, come in uh, here. Uh, I only wanted to know when she's going back to her nest at home. <laughs> Children of today have no manners at all. Little ruffians. Oh, I suspect we were just the same. I beg your pardon? I should say the boys were. When I was 15, we lived on a farm, and I remember one day my youngest sister, Bessie, was milking, and I crept up and pushed her off a stool. <laughs> Mind you, I never did it again. I suppose your father punished you. No, Bessie stuck my head in the milk bucket. <laughs> Tea up, come and get it. Oh, Jimmy, behave yourself. Offer Mrs. Billington some cake. Uh, no, not for me, thank you. Go on, don't you feel a bit peckish? <laughs> <laughs> Here, you like that? It's seed cake. No, thank you. <laughs> Ask Mr. Craythorpe. Oh, I think I'll try that cream bun. Last time I was here, I had one of those, didn't I? No, you had three, but who cares? <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, you go into the other room and take your books with you. Go on. Oh, all right. Don't go away, Mr. Crayhawk. And don't speak with your mouth full. And another thing, ask if you want a cake in future. <laughs> it was a spare one. It wouldn't, it wouldn't all go on the plate. One fell on the floor. Oh, no. No, you've not eaten a cake that's fallen on the floor. No, I put it back on the plate and took another one. <laughs> Jimmy, you're the limit. Show me which one it was. It was, uh, the, uh... Don't go away. I'd better go and do me homework, ma'am. Jimmy, which cake was on the floor? The one Mr. Craythorpe's just eaten. <laughs> Clithero, you're a dead duck. Now, I'll never know how fast Mr. X walked pushing his blooming bike. And if I can't find out his MPH, the teacher will lay it on me BTM. <laughs> oh, if that's Billy, there's still a chance I might have tomorrow's dinner sitting down. Hello, Jim. Is your Susan in? Yes, come in quick. You what? 
She's having a bath. Come in the living room. Come on. Take it easy. That's my best suit you're pulling about. Oh, sorry, Billy. What's going on? Have a look at this book. Just a minute. Did you say Susan was having a bath? Uh, yes. But it's only half an hour ago she phoned me and said she'd just had a bath. Yes, well, uh, my mother sent her back up to wash her knees again. <laughs> you don't expect me to believe that. Why not? It happens to me every Friday. <laughs> anyway, see if you can work out that and then I'll shout our Susan. All right, let's have a look. A man gets a... Oh, I see. Have you got it? Yes. Well, what is it? It's an arithmetic problem. Oh, very good. <laughs> look, Billy... If I don't get these sums right, I'll be kept in after school tomorrow by Whistling Willie. Who's Whistling Willie? Our form master. Mr. Willie Grimble. We used to call him Willie Eck. <laughs> Till he had his teeth out, now he's Whistling Willie. <laughs> you should hear him. Boys, your answers uh, to these uh, sums are simply shocking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do what I can before I take Susan to the pictures. Oh, so it was you at the door, Billy. I suppose Kosh Boy here is asking you to do his sums. Yes, so go and do something useful for a few minutes, like jumping off the roof. <laughs> Billy, I'm ready to go. Oh, right, Susan. I'm sorry, Jimmy, I'll have to leave. What? You're not letting her tell you what to do, are you? Dopey Anna. Oh, you don't understand, Jimmy, you see. Come I along, Billy. Dear brother, you've had it. All right. But the next time you're saying goodnight under my bedroom window, you better wear a Mac. <laughs> Ozzie, what time is it? Half past four. Mr. Grimble, it's half past four. Yes, yes, I can see the time for myself. <laughs> Oswald Higginbottom, get on with your work. You've kept us in for half an hour, sir. When can we go home? As soon as those sums are done to my satisfaction. Yes, sir. <laughs> Quiet. Ozzy, listen to this. I'll get him going. <clears throat> sir, how many minutes are there in an hour and six minutes? Sixty-six, of course. <laughs> Pardon? Sixty-six. <laughs> oh, the same as six times twelve. You ignoramus. Six twelves are seventy-two. Six elevens are sixty-six. <laughs> Pardon, sir? <laughs> six elevens are sixty-six. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Oswald, if you make another sound, I'll thrash you. Sir, it's no use. I can't do none of these sums. Clitheroe, oh, your grammar. Will you never learn? I can't do any of these sums. Well, if you can't do them, we've got a fat chance. <laughs> oh, oh, give me strength. You said, I can't do none of these sums, didn't you? No, sir, I said, I can't do none of them. I thought you were good at them. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to explain you mustn't say I can't do none of these sums. Oh, you don't want the headmaster to find out. <laughs> well, uh, Ozzy and me can keep a secret. Ozzy and me? No, Ozzy and me. <laughs> we'll keep us mouths shut. Keep what shut? Us mouths. <laughs> well, don't some mothers have them. <laughs> Look at that rain out there, Pat. Why does it always have to rain on a Saturday? It doesn't. It always rains on wash day. But men don't notice that. Hello, Mum. Grandad. Hey, haven't you finished reading the morning paper yet? It's 11 o'clock. No, I haven't. Leave your grandfather alone, Jimmy. Well, Mum, you said we're going to me auntie's tomorrow, so I was thinking I'd better do me homework this morning. The sport on the telly all afternoon and a sea picture tonight. Grandad won't want to miss that. I won't miss it. And you're going to do your homework yourself. What? Whistling Willie gave Ozzy and me 20 more sums to do for Monday. Yes, he's been on the phone to me. Who, Ozzy? No, Whistling Willie. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Mr. Grimble. 
He said he's going to deal severely with you if you don't work harder. And I told him to go ahead and promised no one would help you. Mum, how could you do that to your own son? There'll be no telly for you until that work's finished. But I've been waiting for this picture. If I'm going to see when I leave school, I want to know what to do. Never mind about when you leave school. You're going to work while you're still there. All right, don't help me then. But maybe you'll be sorry before long. Nobody cares what happens to me. I've a good mind to eat a worm and commit suicide. <laughs> well, I'm not going to school on Monday. Oh, Willie can whistle his nut off. But I won't come running. Come on, Ozzy. Answer. Hello? Ozzy? Get your things packed tonight. We're running away to sea tomorrow. <laughs> because we'll never get those sums done. And will you murder us? Yeah, same here with my mob. No, we'll go to Liverpool and get on a ship. Well, if we don't like them, we'll become pirates. <laughs> I'll stick a wooden leg on you. <laughs> Look, yesterday I heard Mr. Craythorpe say he'd call for Beaky Billington at half past six on Sunday night to take her to Liverpool for a women's guild conventional. Yes, all we have to do is to be outside her house and when he calls for her, we'll hide in the back of his car. <laughs> That's it, Ozzy. Stay under the rug and keep quiet. How about you coming under this rug? I'll get under when I see Craythorpe coming with pretty Polly Billington. Well, it's hot under here. Oh, stick another pie in your mouth and shut up. <laughs> quiet, here they come. Let's get under the rug. It's a lovely evening for a drive, Mrs Billington. Yes, and there's no need to hurry, is there? No, the meeting is not till 8 o'clock. In you go there. Well, are we all set then? Yes, thank you, Theodore. Would you like a rug round your knees? I have one at the back. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, no, please. No, no, I don't think so. <sighs> Good old Billington. <laughs> well, if you're quite sure, we'll get going. We couldn't have picked a nicer evening for the trip. Only ten miles to Liverpool, Mrs. Billington. Really? Why, it seems we've only been driving for five minutes. More like five days. It's like an oven under this rug. I can't breathe. Not up and lie. No wonder with your gob full of biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk, you're dropping crumbs down me neck. What did you say, Theodore? I didn't speak. Oh, I'm sorry. I wonder if I've got quiet. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> I didn't sneeze. Neither did I. Whoever's under that rug, come out. Meow. <laughs> a cat. Oh, oh. And a dog. Ridiculous. Come out or I'll beat you with my umbrella. All right, we give up. So, it's you. James, Oswald, what are you doing? Playing leapfrog. <laughs> We wanted a lift to Liverpool because we're running away to sea. Well, I think you want a good thrashing, both of you. Your parents will be frantic. They don't know we've gone. Well, I'll take you on to the meeting, Mrs Billington, and then drive these two scallywags home. If we're lucky, I'll get them back before anyone finds they're missing. Now, calm yourself, Pat. Jimmy will just be out playing somewhere. I'll give him playing when he comes in. It's nine o'clock. Hello. Hello, is that you, Higginbottom? Yes. I wondered if uh, Aussie might have seen our Jimmy. He hasn't come home. What? Oh, no. Right. Thanks. <laughs> don't worry. I'll deal with them all right. Father, what is it? Aussie's left a note saying he and Jimmy have run away to sea. Oh, no. Well, where? Where's he gone? Well, Father, we've got to go no, and find him. No, no, Pat, no, no, we'll find him. Yeah, but where? He could be miles away. Oh, my poor baby. Pat, my dear, now pull yourself together. The police will find him. What? Well, come on, now, come on. We'll just get away down to the police station. Oh. Right, 
Mr. Craythorpe, come on, lift me up. Well, now, do be careful, James. It's all right. Lucky thing I broke the catch on the back kitchen window last week. Steady. Now, kneel on my shoulders. Now, stand on them. Oh, not my head. Funny, it felt soft. <laughs> Here we go. I'm in. I'm on the sink. <laughs> the floor. <laughs> James, James, are you all right? Come in, I'm fine. A few cups and saucers are bent a bit, though. <laughs> well, anyway, you're home. Yes, and they aren't in yet, so they won't even know I've been out at all. You're very fortunate. Uh, yes. Well, there's the table. Here's some paper. You work out the sums and I'll copy them in my book later. Uh, you promised in the car, you know. I know. You settle down in the armchair and we'll see what these problems are that have caused all this trouble. Well, I think that's the lot. It was 20 sums, you said, wasn't it, Jim? Oh, he's off. Oh, how innocent they look when they're asleep. Put to see. All aboard. He's dreaming. Not too happily either. I wonder what it is. Avast, Darius Swans. Sixteen men on the dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum Drink and the devil have done for the rest Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum A vast air and gun yes I said that's what Here's your fiddles prepared by Miss Purity's sister Susanna <laughs> That's not Black Dog, he's me granddad isn't it, Ozzy? It looks like it. We shouldn't have stowed away on Long John's ship. I said we should have tried the Queen Mary. <laughs> Stop eating all those ship's dog biscuits. They've got to last for months. Black <laughs> dog, you bearded old bosun. The captain wants you. Billy, there, Miss Purity. What does a terrible Long John want? He hasn't plugged anyone today. So if you can't find any stories, you report to him with your shirt off. Oh, heck, don't breathe, Ozzy. <laughs> I smell the blood of an English stowaway. Look, Black Dog. Come out. Come out and be flogged. No, mercy, Grandad. I mean, I mean Black Dog. Mercy. This'll put Long John in a good mood. Tie him to the mast. Oh, no, Mum. Oh, goody, goody stowaways. Miss Purity, after they're flogged, can I rub in the salt, pepper, and mustard? Salt, pepper, and mustard? <laughs> Long John likes his victims well seasoned. Mum, Mum, it's me, Jimmy. Susan, help me. Grandad, if you save me, I'll take all your empty bottles back to the Rose and Crown for nothing. <laughs> ah, we know you, Jim Hawkins. The captain's been waiting to feed you to the sharks. Help! Help! I don't want to go into the water. It's not bath night. <laughs> <laughs> Get back! Here he is! The terror of the seas, Long John Crater. Ha-ha! A vast belay, you swamps and all that rot. Ha-ha! Trim the top sail, my hearties. Splice the main brace and water the canary. <laughs> Mr. Crayford is me, your best friend. Run out the plank and throw them to the shark. No, help, let go, stop it. I'm too young to die. James, James, wake up, wake up. Help, help, help. Oh, Long John, where's your plank? <laughs> I was dreaming. You certainly were. What time is it? Eleven o'clock. That's why I woke you. I'm rather worried your mother and grandfather aren't home yet. Well, the ship's probably docked at... You what? But they're always home early. Something must have happened to them. 
It is rather strange. They've had an accident. Oh, now, now, James. I bet they've been knocked down by a road pig. Hog. <laughs> now, now, don't get excited. It's all right for you. It's not your mum. She might be in hospital with a broken leg. <laughs> She'll probably walk in here any minute. Don't be daft. How can she walk with a broken leg? <laughs> James, you don't know her leg is broken. It might be her arm. Oh, oh, what am I saying? <laughs> oh, me poor mum. Found the hospital. Phone the police. Now, now, James, let's not get... Phone the police! All right, all right. Now, just calm down. Oh, so there you are. Jimmy. You're a nice pair. Where have you been? What? Where have we been? Yes, me and Mr. Craythorpe have been worried to death. We were phoning the police. Now, look here. Don't you... ever do this again. <laughs> well, I like that. Is that all you've got to say? It's not all I'm going to do. Grandad, what are you doing? Stop it! Ow! Ow! No! no. Stop it, Grandad! Ow! Yeah! In that recording of the Clitheroe Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Diana Day, Peter Goodwright, Rosalie Williams and Gordon Rollings. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The programme was written and produced by James Hasey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I thought you'd like to know we're all friends again. Mum's forgiven me. And when Whistling Willie saw Mr. Craythorpe's answers, he said, I was improving by leaps and bounds. <laughs> it was a pity Ozzy copied them on the bus. His boot looked like though it had measles. <laughs> Willie gave him a pat on the head for his sums and a belt on his rudder for the blot. <laughs> by the way, you'll all be delighted to know that in the sum I was doing, Mr. X walked at three miles an hour. Marvellous, isn't it? No. I don't care either. <laughs> ta -da, me We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in... Nothing But The Truth. <laughs> Ozzy, you know as much about cricket as Daft Dicky Dotty. Look, when I bowl, you're supposed to stand in front of the stumps, not behind them. I wasn't aiming at your head. No, I wasn't. It's your fault for eating all the time. Just as I was letting that fast one go, I slipped on one of your banana skins. <laughs> oh, leave that meat pie alone. You don't half look daft with your bat in one hand and a pie in the other. Is it one your mother made? Yes, it is. Oh, well, you'll need the bat to break the crust. <laughs> now, we'll have another go. Ready? Right, play. Well, it serves you right. Fancy having a bottle of pop stuck up your jersey. I'm all wet. You've been all wet for years. Look, I'll bat a new ball. Come on, let's change over. At this rate, we'll never win the ashes back from the Broad Street gang. Go on, bowl me a fast one, and I'll show you how to hit a six. I don't bowl fast if they spinners. All right, try your spinners, and I'll show you what I'll do to them. Got it! Right over the wall, and... Straight through the greenhouse. <laughs> Sir? What's that, Pat? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, very nice indeed. Thank you, miss. If I had any change, I'd leave you a tip. 
What do you want? Change for? A threepenny bit. Oh, fuck. Well, it's nearly six o'clock now, Pat. I'd uh, I better be off. They'll be waiting for me down at the club. You know, you're really enjoying yourself down at that club, aren't you? Oh, you know, Pat, I like working behind the bar. I like the interesting questions I get asked. Like, uh, uh, what will you have, barman? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, you know, ten bob a night's not to be sniffed at. Not to the pension I get. Jimmy, don't slam the door. Oh, what were you saying, Mum? <laughs> Jimmy, how many times have I told you about slamming that door? I don't know. I haven't been counting. <laughs> now, that'll do, Jimmy. Well, Pat, I'll get away down to the club. What again? I don't know what it is you keep going there for. But it doesn't half make you walk funny on the way back. <laughs> no, 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 that'll do, Jim. You know very well I'm working at the club behind the bar. I know, as his dad told me. He said you gave him so much froth on the top of his glass it looked like a shaving mug. <laughs> yeah, you know, Higginbotham's always complaining. You know, last night he was grumbling to me about the darts not being sharp enough. Well, the next time he grumbles, test him for him. Test him? How? Drop his change on the floor and wait till he bends down. <laughs> if I listened to you, I wouldn't be earning that ten bob a night much longer. Do they pay you ten bob a night just for working behind a bar? Ah, that's right. Have they got any vacancies for a pop boy? <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't. Well, I'll, I'll be off then, Pat. I'll see you about eleven o'clock. <laughs> right, Father. Uh, bye, Jimmy. To all, Grandad. <laughs> right, Jimmy, sit down and have your tea. Jimmy! What, Mum? Look at your hands. They're filthy. What have you been doing on your way home from school, sweeping chimneys? No, Ozzy and me had a quiet game of cri uh, cowboys and Indians. Oh, I thought you were going to say cricket. I was, till I remembered the greenhouse. Greenhouse? Oh, uh, uh, did I say greenhouse? Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I was thinking about uh, jailhouse. Oh. Uh, when we play cowboys and Indians. Yeah. And that's why I got mixed up when I said greenhouse. <laughs> because you can't have a jail in a greenhouse, but you can have a ball in a jailhouse. I mean... What are you blathering about? I haven't a clue. <sighs> There's the phone. Uh, pop in the kitchen and wash your hands. There's a love. Right, old ma'am. I won't be a minute. Hello. Me aside, 3142. Yeah, is that Clitheroe's? Yes, Mrs. Clitheroe speaking. Who's that? Yeah, Al Paul. Who? Oh, you, you remember me, Mrs. Clitheroe. We met at your niece's wedding. I was the best man. I remember you. You, Yes, of course. Can I speak to Susan, please? I'm afraid she isn't home from work yet. Oh. Uh, will she be long? I don't really know. She should be in soon. Only I, I wanted to talk to her, and I, I can see me bus. The driver's just climbing in. Well, why don't you call round at the house? She'll be in tonight. Oh, can I? Of course you can. Yeah, oh, no, I can't. It's Friday, isn't it? Yes. Oh, no. No, I can't come tonight. Yeah, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but our Ethel always goes to the pictures on Friday and she leaves the baby at home and her husband's on night at the bakehouse and I've got to sit with him. Hey, have you got the right time? <laughs> it, it's just turned six o'clock. Yeah, I thought it would be because my bus goes at six and it's gone. Oh, heck. Ta-da. Oh, well. Now, wash my hands, Mum. Who was that on the phone? The young man we met at your cousin's wedding. Oh, you mean Alfie Hall. Yeah, he's a strange case and no mistake. Gabbles his words out, gets things all the wrong way round. Oh, he has a good reason for doing that. What is it? He's daft. <laughs> well, anyhow, he seems very interested in our Susan. He's dafter than I thought. That'll do. Sit down and get your tea. Oh, there you are, Susan. Sit down, love. Your tea's ready. Good, I'm starving. It's only toad in the hole, I'm afraid. Here, Jimmy, pass this plate to Susan. Those sausages look lovely. Well, be careful with that fork. One of those sausages is my finger. <laughs> Jimmy, now don't start on Susan. Oh, I don't listen to his little jokes anymore. Talking about little jokes, there's one just been on the phone for you. <laughs> What's he talking about now, Mother? Oh, it was Alfie Hall asking for you. Alfie Hall? Oh, not again. Well, what do you mean? Ever since I met him at the wedding, he's never left me alone. He's rung me at least three times at work asking for a date. It's got so bad I told the switchboard to transfer his calls to Mr. Wilkins. Well, that's silly. He won't want to take Mr. Wilkins out. <laughs> Why, uh, Jimmy, I told Alfie he could call round here tomorrow to see you, Susan. Oh, Mother, I'd rather not see him. But why not? Well, it's Billy. 
He's heard about Alfie chasing after me, and he doesn't like it. Oh, oh see who's at the front door, please, Jimmy. Right, Mum. It might be Ozzy wondering when he's going to get his ball back. Well, this is interesting, Susan. So Billy's jealous of Alfie, is he? Oh, Mother, you've no idea. You should hear the things he says about Alfie. It wasn't Ozzy, Mum. Alfie Hall, he's a stupid idiot. No girl with any brains would go out with him. Perhaps that's why he's after a date with you. <laughs> Jimmy, who was at the door? Mr. Creethorpe's called to see you. He's gone out to lock his car. Oh, dear, I wish Theodore hadn't called. You know what Friday night's like in this house. But I thought you liked Mr. Creethorpe. Well, I do. Theodore's a very old friend, and we understand each other. It's just that I've got a lot to do tonight, and I'd hate to have him thinking that he's, well, in the way. He's so sensitive, the slightest thing can hurt him. Sometimes, for a man, he's quite touchy. Well, uh, shall I go and tell him we're not in? Oh, don't be so silly. <laughs> I'll ask him to have a cup of tea. After he's had it, I don't suppose he'll stay long. Oh, your tea's not that bad. May I come in? Yes, come <laughs> in, Theodore. Would you like some tea? Uh, no, thanks. I'm afraid I haven't time. I just called to see if I could arrange a little get-together with you about women's guild matters, particularly the annual outing. Of course, Theodore, any time. Would tomorrow morning be convenient? Yes, I think so. Oh, good. Well, I'll buzz off. Uh, I, I mean, I'll go. <laughs> oh, by the way, James, did you enjoy your game of cricket this afternoon? Yes, I... Uh, cricket? Hmm. Well, yes, it was you I saw on the spare ground by the allotments, wasn't it? You with your friend Oswald? <laughs> no, it, it couldn't have been. No. We were in the park playing cowboys and Indians. Oh, well, it's of no consequence. I'll see you tomorrow morning, then, Mrs. Clitheroe. Certainly, Theodore. Good. I let myself out. Good night, all. <laughs> Good night. night. Well... You know, it's not like Theodore to be mistaken. No, and it's not like Jimmy to tell the truth. Mum, she's calling me a fibber. Can I clout her with the teapot? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, Jimmy. I don't mind what you were doing this afternoon, as long as that game of cricket didn't cause any trouble. Oh, it didn't, Mum. Oh, heck. There you are. He has been telling a lie. I was trapped. He's always doing it. You know, he couldn't go a day without telling a lie to save his life. Who couldn't? Do you want to bet on it? No, it would be a shame to take your money. Is that so? How much will you bet me? Anything you like. Five bob? Yes. You're on. I'll bet you five bob I don't tell a lie for 24 hours, starting from now. Ma'am, you're a witness. All right, Jimmy. Now, come on, finish your tea. Right, I'll sure. Oh, uh, by the way, Jimmy... What did you have for dinner at school today? What? The dinner. I hope they're giving you value for my one and sixpence a day. Well, what did you have? Well, um, I, uh, oh, heck. I had three whipped cream walnuts and here's your ninepence change. <laughs> Do the handlebars. Yeah, hello there, Jim. Are you oiling your bike? No, I'm fishing for tiddlers. <laughs> hey, careful now. You know, that little bit of sarcasm could lose you your bet. Oh, yes, I forgot. Well, just watch it. You've still got till a quarter past six tonight to go. Just one slip of the tongue and you've had that five bob. Don't worry. I'll make sure a lie doesn't pass my lips, even I have to talk through my nose. Has <laughs> your mother gone out shopping? Yes, yeah, she went out with Susan before you got up. She says she'd get my tobacco for me. Yes, and she wants the money from you. <laughs> oh, well, I'll pay her when I get back. I'll be drawing some wages at the club today. Is that where you're going now? Yes. But it's only ten o'clock in the morning. Aye, but on Saturday the club opens at lunchtime as well. Uh, hey, Jim. What? Who's that character waving at us over the fence there? His face seems familiar. Who? Yeah, hello, Jimmy. Oh, him. You remember Grandad at the wedding. He was the one who came up to you and said, Can I borrow some of your confetti? I've got a leaky bag. Oh, why? I remember him. Hey, can I come in, Jimmy? What does he want here? He wants to see our Susan. I'd better invite him in. If he keeps waving like that much longer, he'll wear himself out. <laughs> Aye. Well, um, I'll, I'll be off to the club and I'll see you later. Um... Uh, won't you go in? Oh, da. 
It's nice day, isn't it? Aye, very nice. M mind you, it's not as nice as yesterday because the wind's getting up and I've... I do, oh, he's gone. <laughs> Come in, Alfie. Yeah, hello, Jimmy. Hey, you all in your bag? Have you heard about the bet? No. Well, I'm just milking a goat. Yeah, I'll get away in a minute. Yeah, I can't see a goat. No, you're not standing where I am. Yeah, you know, then that'll do. Yeah, that was your granddad I was just talking to, wasn't he? Mm, that's right. Oh, I remember him at the wedding, because he kept getting my name wrong. He kept calling me Charlie. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I have got a middle name, though. I bet you can't guess it. Go on, it begins with the letter P. Er, uh, Percy. No. Uh, Peter. No. Try Paul. Paul, then. No, it's not that. <laughs> oh, I give up. What is it? Philip. Oh, no wonder I couldn't guess it. Philip doesn't begin with a P, it begins with a P. <laughs> uh, well, uh, anyway, that, that's my middle name. Yeah, uh, how about your Susan? Has she got another name? Yeah, Scraggy Neck. You are? <laughs> right, you're having me on again, aren't you? Yeah, hey, well, would you like a toffee? Oh, yes, please. Hey, can, can I help you with your bag? Well, I've done the oiling, the tyres won't blowing up. Well, I'll blow them up for you. Well, before you start to take a deep breath, I've got no pump. <laughs> hey, you know, Jimmy, I, I can't wait to see your Susan. Well, I should go then, because she doesn't want to see you. You what? She, she didn't say that, did she? She did. But, but we got on fine at the wedding reception. Look, she's coming up the road. Ask her. Oh, dear. Oh, I, I, she'll see me in a minute. J Jimmy, can I hide in your coal shed? Don't be daft. Just go up to her and show her you're a man. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, no, no, I couldn't. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Hall. <laughs> hello. I, I was just going. Good goodbye. Don't be daft. Show what you're made of. <laughs> you're not going already, are you? Well, um, maybe, yes, yes, I'm afraid so. Is something the matter? Well, look, look Susan, I, I've been talking to Jimmy and there's something I'd like to know from you. Yes? What is it? Uh, but, but, uh... Well? Do, do you know how the buses run back to town? <laughs> Listen, lover boy, if you're really in a hurry to get away, borrow my bike. Look, will somebody tell me what's going on? Well, J Jimmy told me that you said you didn't want to see me. What? Jimmy Clitheroe, what have you been... He asked me for the truth, so I got it. Why, you... Hey, uh, uh, I can't stand here listening to this. I feel a right fool. Well, she said you were a stupid idiot. How dare you? I heard you. Those were your very words. You said, Alfie Hall, he's a stupid idiot. I know I said that. Not but... to mention the other thing. No girl with any brains will go out with him. But I was only repeating what Billy said. I'm sorry, Mr. Hall, but... Oh, oh. you're wasting your breath. He's gone. <laughs> Your mother's gone out with Susan again? Yes, they've gone to the hat shop. Oh, well, I'll wait if you don't mind. <laughs> There'll be a long time. You know what Mum's like when she goes for a new hat? Hmm? She has so many out on the counter, she finishes up by buying the one she went in with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Craythorpe. Oh, you've got your finger bandaged. Oh, that, yes, I had an accident this morning. You see, I was just giving Stanley his breakfast when he bit me. He bit you? Oh, yes. One has to be careful with Stanley. He's always trying to bite people. Hey, who's Stanley? The cannibal king? <laughs> no, no. Stanley is my new budgerigar. Oh, I didn't know you'd got one. Can he talk? Well, I have been trying to teach him to recite Georgie Porgy, but every time I get to pudding and pie, he pecks me. <laughs> Why don't you carry a chair and a whip? <laughs> now, James, don't be silly. I like Stanley. He's a very nice bird to have in the house. I wish I could say the same for the bird in this house. <laughs> Our Susan. Oh, you've been having trouble with her again, have you? Yes, you should have heard the row. Just because I told the truth about something. Well, I, I must say that's a change. You're usually in trouble for the opposite reason. And now what was the cause of all this bother? You, Mr. Craythorpe. Me, James? Yes, the next time you see me playing cricket, just ask me first what I was doing before you tell anybody. <laughs> Surely, James, your mother's not annoyed at you telling the truth. All I know is, she said, sometimes it's better not to say anything at all because the truth can hurt. Well, that's true, James. It's all a question of considering people's feelings. For instance, 
Your grandfather tries one of his rather <laughs> whiskery old jokes out on me, and although I don't think it's particularly funny, I laugh and say, <laughs> Mr. Sinclair, sometimes you can be quite a wit. <laughs> but you see, I'm only telling a half-truth. You mean he's only a half-wit? <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. Look, um, take this Women's Guild matter I wish to discuss with your mother, the annual outing. Now, most of the ladies want to go to Edinburgh, but not Mrs. Eccles. Fatty Eccles? Where does she want to go to? Well, Fatty Eccles... Uh, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Eccles uh, fancies Cornwall. She's got an idea that she'd like to go in uh, for a sail on a fishing boat. Although, <laughs> with her size, she'd look more at home in a whaler. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Graythorpe, sometimes you can be quite a wit. <laughs> uh, yes, quite. <laughs> now, Mrs. Eccles causes so much trouble in the committee that the other ladies take me on one side and call her names. But when fat um, <laughs> Mrs. Eccles asks me what they're whispering about, I'd pretend it was something else. You see, if I told her the plain truth, she'd be offended for months afterwards. Yes, they say elephants never forget. <laughs> right, yes, Jeff. Now, you see what I mean about not always telling the truth to people's faces? Of course, I see now. That's why when you called round last night, my mum didn't tell you what she told me. <laughs> what was that, James? She said you were a nuisance. What? But she made me most welcome. She said she didn't want you to call because it was Friday and you were a nuisance. But I said I wasn't staying long. Oh, I know. She said that as well. She said that uh, once she'd had your cup of tea, you'd soon be off. I see. Is that all? No, she said you were very old and the slightest thing could hurt you because you were a bit touched. Uh, touchy. <laughs> James. James, I'm sure you're making all this up. No, I'm not. You ask her. Very well. I will. Oh, Theodore, you're here. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Mum. Hey, what's that thing you've got on your head? <laughs> well, uh, there I was, standing in the milliner's shop, looking at the hat. When a lampshade <laughs> fell on your nut. <laughs> Jimmy, it's a very nice hat, isn't it, Theodore? Hmm. <laughs> oh. Theodore, what's the matter? Mrs. Clitheroe. Apparently, my call on you last night was rather inconvenient. What? Oh, no. Uh, oh, Jimmy hasn't been telling the truth again, has he? Yes. I've been coming to this house for years, thinking that I was welcome. But now my eyes are open, and what I see really shocks me. What do you mean? He means he doesn't like your new hat either. <laughs> Uh, there you are, Charlie. There's your drink, your change, and your very good health. Now, anybody else want anything? Yes, a pint of dandelion and burdock. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, you can't come in here. Why not? You're open, aren't you? Look, Jimmy, this is a bar. Can't you read the notices? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, nobody served in this bar under 18 years of age. Well, I'm in no hurry. I'll wait. <laughs> hey, Peter, is that your grandson? Uh, yeah, yeah, there, there, that's right, Arthur. Well, get him out of this bar, will you? You'll get this place raided. Right aye, aye, right away, Arthur. I'll take him in the singing room. Why, is there a concert on? Come on, just you come with me, through here. Now, in you go. Now then, Jimmy, what's the idea coming into this club? I want to talk to you, it's urgent. Well, make it quick, we're very busy. Now, what is it? Well, uh, I want a packet of crisps and uh, a man called. Man? What man? He wanted to see you, something to do with your pension. He was a funny little fella, bald head and specs. The pension fella? What happened? I told him you weren't in, you were down at the club. Well, I hope he doesn't come here looking for me. Oh, I don't think he will. He wouldn't come and bother you while you were working, would he? No, perhaps not. Here? You said I was working here? Yes, I had to tell him the truth, hadn't I? <laughs> anyway, he said he'll call round at our house on Monday. Oh, well, I suppose it can't be helped. I'd better get my story ready for him. At least he doesn't know how much I'm earning here. Does he? 
I think he's got a rough idea. <laughs> you mean you told him about the ten bob a night I'm getting? Well, I did tell him the truth. Mind, I didn't know how much you got in tips. So I, I had to make a guess. <laughs> Don't you feel well, Grandad? You've got a funny colour. What? You, 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 you'll go a funny colour in a minute. The chap will start asking all sorts of awkward questions and there might even be talk of cutting my pension down. I'll have to give up this job now, thanks to you. Well, perhaps it's just as well. What do you mean? Well, this job's too much for you. It's making you bad-tempered. <laughs> Craythorpe's a long time on the phone, Mother. Yes, and Jimmy's a long time coming back for lunch. I want a word with that young man. You did manage to straighten out the misunderstanding with Mr. Craythorpe, didn't you? Yes, thank heaven. Susan, I hope this will teach you a lesson. Never to make any more silly bets with Jimmy again. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't, Mother. I spent nearly half an hour calming Alfie down. Oh, oh what an embarrassing conversation. I feel quite limp. Well, it, it was Mrs. Eccles phoning you, wasn't it? Yes. She met James in the street not half an hour ago, and he went to great pains to re repeat the substance of my conversation with him. Mrs. Eccles was absolutely berserk. <laughs> what did she say? Well, for one thing, James must have repeated my joke about the whaler to her. Why? Well, her opening words were, Theodore Craythorpe, this is Moby Dick speaking. <laughs> Oh, yes. When I tried to say it was a mistake and asked her to forget it, she replied, My name is Lavinia Eccles, not Nelly the Elephant. <laughs> Mother, I hope you'll see that Jimmy suffers for this. Don't worry, I will. Oh, I shudder to think what will happen at the next meeting. She's going to demand my resignation as Secretary of the Guild. She actually said that? Well, her actual words were, I'll have you slung out if I've got to do it myself, you great big ape. <laughs> I should never have spoken to James about her at all. Ah, oh, he's here. I'll deal with him. Sorry I'm late, Mum. Oh, that's all right, Jimmy. How is Mrs. Eccles? Fatty Eccles? <laughs> I haven't seen her. That's all we wanted to know. What do you mean? Mrs. Eccles has just rung Mr. Craythorpe here about the conversation she had with you not half an hour ago. Oh, heck. Dear brother, you've just told a lie, so I'll have my five shillings from you, if you don't mind. It, it was a mistake. I didn't see Fatty Eccles. I uh, uh, spoke to her with my eyes shut. I mean... Jimmy, <laughs> I don't normally approve of betting, but this will teach you a lesson. You owe Susan five shillings. Oh, but, ma'am... Come on, hand it over. All right, then. Take it out of this ten-bob note. Where did you get ten shillings from? I got it off Grandad, after I told him about the pension man. But why did he give it to you? To stop me telling the truth anymore. Before I landed in, in clink. <laughs> now, come on, sister dear. Five bob change, please. Oh, no. You're not having it. Why not? It's mine. Yes, but you're going to spend it on something you didn't expect. What do you mean? Your friend Ozzy called while you were out. He's been telling the truth, too. He didn't tell you I brought... Yes. Oh. That five shillings is going towards a new greenhouse window. Wait till I see him. I'll put him out of the race for good. What race? The human race. <laughs> <laughs> In that recording of The Clitheroe Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Danny Ross, and Diana Day. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The programme, which was written by Frank Roscoe and produced by James Casey, starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. to know the trouble's all been straightened out. Alfie forgave Susan with sweets. And Mr. Craythorpe forgave Mam with flowers. And Fatty Eccles forgave me with a clout round the ear <laughs> Oh, she doesn't half pack a wallop. <laughs> Grandad had a rough time with the pension, Mam. But that's all right now. 
The pension man made sure it doesn't happen again. He's joined Grandad's club. <laughs> I forgive Nozzy for telling me mum about the broken window. Well, he couldn't help it. After all, you're bound to be a squealer when you eat like a... <laughs> ta -ra. Present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair's grandfather, Patricia Burke's mother, Danny Ross's Alfie Hall, Diana Day's Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in Storm in a Test Tube. <laughs> show them how a scientist washes up. A spoonful of potassium permagnogate crystals, a pinch of caustic soda. Oh, when they see how this works, I'll bet they'll put me on the telly doing adverts. <clears throat> and here is Professor Clitheroe to show us his magic washing up liquid called squirt. <laughs> Housewives, you squirt. Don't stand over the sink all day scrubbing the pots, wearing yourself out. Like that bad-tempered woman who fidgets all night with wavy lines going through a nut. <laughs> Have a deep sleep every morning while your washing up is done by a little squirt. <laughs> now back to Maverick. <laughs> That's the crystals dissolved. Now, a little bit of nitrate. And last of all, three drops of acid. One, two... Oh, heck, I think I've overdone it. I'm certain I've overdone it. Jimmy, haven't you finished that? Good heavens, what's ha... What have you done? It was in a good cause, ma'am. I was saving you money. Saving me money? Yes, ma'am. That washing up stuff you bought cost one and six, so I made me own for tuppence. That chemistry set again. Look, if I see it in this kitchen once more, I'm going to show you an experiment. An explosion on the seat of your pants. Ma'am, now don't lose your temper. You know it makes your neck go all blotchy. Collect those dust <laughs> Get them out of this kitchen! Yes, ma'am, straight away, ma'am. Oh. Where is he? Where is he? Ah, there you are, you little menace. Come here. Grandad, what's the matter, eh? You're twisting me collar. I'm sorry, I meant to twist your ear. Father, what is it? It's little Louis Pasteur here and his chemicals. Oh, now what's he done? Well, he put one of his concoctions in the bathroom and I've just gargled with it. Well... I thought I was poisoned. It was in one of my bottles and it was red. The same colour as my gargle. Oh, that one. Well, I don't know why you're making such a fuss. That'll do your throat good. It kills germs. Well, well was it a gargle then? No, it's a disinfectant. <laughs> I made to clean the bath. Well, my throat's not a drain. Look, I I'm sorry, but where else can I use my chemistry set? I need water and my man won't let me stay in here. Our Susan has a wash bowl in her bedroom, but she won't let me use it. You destructive little horror. I'll smack your face for you. Help, ma'am, stop her. Has everybody gone mad? I'm mad, all right. I thought so. Grandad, get the vet. <laughs> Don't tell me he's done something to you, too, Susan. That's right. Don't tell her, Susan. Shut up. Mother, there was an ink mark on my skirt, so I gave him two shillings to get me some stain remover from the chemist. But Why didn't waste bother. two bob when I could make it myself for a tanner? So I just stuck an old label on the bottle. Yes, and now I need something to stick over the white patch it's bleached in my brown skirt. Well, would you believe it? I've invented a stain remover. <laughs> That contains its own bleach. All right, Susan, I'll have your skirt repaired and Master James here will pay for it out of his weekly pocket money. I am talking about money. Susan gave you two shillings. Now, where is her one and sixpence change? I thought the money would wake you up. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I thought the money would make up an experiment. <laughs> what experiment? Well, you know how you can change blue litmus paper to red and red to blue? Yes. 
Well, I change one and six into whipped cream walnuts. <laughs> Don't worry, Susan. I'll stop the one and six out of his pocket money as well. Ooh, if you keep this up, I'll have to wait till I'm 21 to buy my next bag of gold stoppers. <laughs> Susan, uh, come on upstairs and show me the damage. Right, old Grandad. Well, I'll see if I can do anything with your skirt. He could wear it instead of his kilt. <laughs> Don't you be cheeky. Now just get all this chemistry stuff together and take it up to your bedroom. Well, my room's too small. The last time I did an experiment in there, I couldn't sleep all night with a pong. <laughs> hey, I'll do it in Grandad's bedroom. He's got a cold. I meant put it away. If you want to play with it, you can go out into the tool shed. That's no good, Mama. I need lots of water. Well... Take it into the garden and then wait till it rains. Oh, very funny. Ha, blooming ha. <laughs> Look now, son, I don't mind you using your chemistry set if you'll find the right place. I found a place. A big room with running water that's empty all day. Well, that's all right then. Where is it? Our Susan's bedroom. <laughs> you can't use that as you well know. I could if we swap rooms. Susan would never change rooms with you. Oh, she might if I explain why and if I said please and if you told her to get out. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm having nothing to do with it. All right, I'll ask her myself. <laughs> She'll chase you out of the house. She'll never catch me. <laughs> In that tight skirt and her high heels, she runs like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, where are you, Susan, dear? You're wanted. I'm in the lounge. Does Mama want me? No, I do, Sue. Get out, you delinquent. <laughs> I'm sorry about the skirt, Sue. So am I. Uh, do you forgive me, then? Why? So you can start the torture all over again? There's no need to be nasty. I'd let you have anything of mine. Me water pistol, me, me pogo stick, me ginger beer plant. Don't be stupid. I know you can have the full sand I bought at the joke shop. A full Yes, you could have some fun with that in the back row of the pictures. <laughs> when your boyfriend says, can I hold your hand, just throw it on his knee and say, help yourself. <laughs> Whoa, you are childish. What do I want with any of your silly toys? Well, um, I'm only trying to make up for what I did. And all you do is make fun of me. Now stop crying. I can't. You've started me off now. And I can't stop until I've run out of water. <laughs> Jimmy, stop it. <laughs> all right, I forgive you. About time, too. What? It's about time I did something for you. Oh, that's all right. No, I want to give you a present. No, there's no need to. Oh, please, Susan. All right, then. What is it? I'm going to give you my bedroom. What do you mean? Oh, my cosy little warm bedroom at the front of the house. What about you? Oh, I'll make do with your big cold back bedroom where the tap drips all night. The tap doesn't drip. It will if you stop in it. I mean, uh, it might and you wouldn't get your beauty sleep and you need it badly. Oh, do I? Uh, no, I mean, uh, because you're so pretty. Whatever you mean, I'm staying in my own room. What about when a boyfriend brings you home? If I was in the back room, there'd be nobody to peep on you when you were standing at the front door snogging. <laughs> I'd not stand there snogging, as you call it. I admit on Saturday I spent a few minutes saying goodnight, but that boy was going away for a fortnight. Hmm. Well, the bloke who was here on Friday night must have been going away for good. <laughs> now, don't start that again. I'm sorry, Susan. But I'm trying to explain why it would be better if I had your bedroom. Uh, you had mine, uh, I mean. I see. Well, why do you want my room, Jimmy? Because it's got a washboard for me chemistry. Oh, all right, clever. So now we've got the truth. Well, won't you swap, Sue? Go on, please. Get lost. Eh? Hey? Trying to fool me, you infant. I wouldn't let you in my room if you gave me a fortune. I'm more likely to give you a fortune, one. Well. <laughs> Why couldn't the stork have dropped it down somebody else's chimney? <laughs> Jimmy, what was all that shouting about? My sister, Big Mouth Bertha. <laughs> and quiet little Jim didn't say a word. I gather the swap is off. 
Ma'am, there's only one thing to do. And what's that? Buy a bigger house. Oh, brilliant. Look, ma'am, we can sell this house and use the money to buy a bigger one. But we would need more money than we'd get. Well, we'll sell this house for a lot of money. Oh, I've got work to do. You don't understand these things, Jimmy. Who doesn't? I'll show her how to sell a house. I once put a card in the paper shop and sold me roller skates for five bob. And I'd have got more if they'd had wheels on. <laughs> Anybody, um, called while I've been away? Well, not that I, um... Oh, yes, Aussie called round for you. Oh, well, he's, he's no money to buy a house. What's that, you see? Uh, he wants to show me his bunny and his white mouse. You know, Jimmy, <laughs> I'm beginning to think you're up to something. Grandad, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Just got rid of that crazy notion about finding us a new house. I'm very happy where I am, and nobody's going to move me. You could soon change your mind. What about when that house came empty next to the Rose and Crown? It was all my mum could do to stop you putting your bed on a handcart. <laughs> I'll get it. Oh, if, it, if it's for your mother, she'll be back in about ten minutes. Now well, then, young fella, is this the house that's up for sale? Yes, have, have you brought the money with you? <laughs> no, I haven't. I've come to look the place over. Are they at home, or shall I call back? Uh, they're all out except me, Grandad. But you can come in. Um, I'm handling the deal. Oh, well, they're starting you off young enough anyway. Did you write that advert I saw in the paper shop window? Yes, I did that. Mod semi debt res free held. <laughs> and do you know what it means? I don't have to. You're buying it. <laughs> oh, well, I'd better take a look round. Is this your lounge? Oh, dear. I thought it would be a bigger room than this. I'll bet those alcoves collect some dust. So, uh, you think you'll have it, then? Well, I'll just look at your living room. Yes, uh, well, would you wait there for a minute? I'd better warn me grandad. Now for it. Grandad, uh, there's a gentleman here. Um, he's come to see me mother. Well, she's not in. I know, but he just wants to look round. Um, to wait in here a minute. Well, what's stopping him? You, uh, grandad. You couldn't have a walk in the back garden, could you? Oh, I could do, but I'm not doing. I didn't think you would. So I'll, uh, I'll bring him in then. Yes. Right. Keep your fingers crossed, Clitheroe. Come this way, Mr... Uh, Fletcher. Uh, Mr Fletcher. Would you not talk too much while you're in with me, Grandad? Why not? Well, um, his nerves are very bad, and uh, the doctor says he's got to have uh, complete quiet. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Well, uh, you lead the way. Grandad, uh, this is Mr. Fletcher. Come in. Ah, thank you. Uh, don't let me disturb you. That's all right. Have you lost something? No, I'm just lifting your carpet up to look for dry rot. <laughs> Does it bother you? No, but it seems a funny way to pass the time. Uh, don't you want to go upstairs, Mr. Fletcher? Uh, not just for the moment. My word, these windows fit very badly. I bet they rattle like mad. No wonder your nerves are bad. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my nerves. But I thought the doctor said oh, that... Oh, we haven't told him. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I see. I, I'm sorry. Look. What's going on? I'm sure you ought to go upstairs, Mr. Fletcher. In a minute. Ah, uh, I don't like your ceiling. It's all cracked. And this room wants redecorating. Whoever put that paper on your walls had no idea how to make a joint. I decorated this room myself. Ah, oh, well, that accounts for it. Uh, Mr. Fletcher, aren't you better go upstairs? Quiet, Jimmy. The man's old enough to know whether he wants to go upstairs or not. <laughs> Ah, well, I'm sorry, but I, I think this house is in very bad shape. Well, it might not suit you, but we're quite satisfied with it. Ah, well, some people will live anywhere. Well, it's just a bit enough of this, and I won't sit here and be insulted anymore. Ooh, we've got a very nice coal shed. <laughs> this has been a real wild goose chase. Well, I didn't ask you to come. Oh, we've a lovely view from the pantry. Oh, heck. See who that is, Jimmy. You have no right to mislead me. Now, don't like argue that. with me. What did you come for in the first place? It's not going very well at all. 
Yes, all right. It's only me, Jimmy. I had to come back. I'd forgotten to take my key. Well, could you take your key and forget to come back? I, I mean... <laughs> what are you talking about? If you don't believe me, you can look in the paper shop window for yourself. I know what I'd do if he was my lad. He wouldn't sit down for a fortnight. Well, how did I know... How, how are you going, Mr Fletcher? Get out of my way, you young rip. Whoever was that? Oh, just a friend. Hey, do you know what that young scallywag of yours has done? He's put an advert in a shop window saying that the house was for sale. Jimmy. You deal with him, Pat. If I get my hands on him, it'll be a kiss for the cruelty man. Just you wait till I've made the tea. I won't half give you what for. Oh, heck, here's another one. Well, he's had it. <laughs> Hello, James. It's the wrong number. We're not selling and we're all out. <laughs> Who was it, Jimmy? Mr. Craythorpe wanting to buy... Oh, heck. I'm sorry, Mr. Craythorpe. Come in, please. Thank you, I'm sure. But when you next decide to slam the door in my face, would you please give me time to remove my bowler hat? <laughs> oh, heck. It is a bit flat at the front. <laughs> Dear lady, dear Mr. Craythorpe in the lounge, I'll call you when tea's ready. Right, old man. Come in here, Mr. Craythorpe. Thank you. Now, what else can we do to amuse you? Perhaps you would like to test my reflexes with the poker? It's no use trying to amuse me. I've just remembered I'm miserable. <laughs> oh, come, come, James. Where's your sense of humour? I was only pulling your leg. <laughs> it's not you, Mr. Craythorpe. You never make me miserable. I always laugh at you. <laughs> yes, well, I take that as a compliment. Now, what is wrong, James? I'm fed up. Our Susan won't let me have a wash bowl. I can't use the kitchen sink. I daren't go in the bathroom. And they won't let me sell the house and get a bigger one. Even though the man read the advert where I saw me roller skates in the paper shop with no wheels on. So can you blame me for being upset? Uh, yes, uh, no. Uh, that is, I'm a little confused myself. What about? Uh, this uh, mobile paper shop with no wheels. I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> The man who advertised the roller skates with paper You're on You're not them. just confused, you potty. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. Um, that is... James, whatever is wrong, I shouldn't worry about it. Oh, it's all right for you. You've got a big house. Five bedrooms and there's only you and your sister. Mr. Craythorpe, how would you like a lodger? Just a minute, James. Do you mean yourself? Mr. Craythorpe, can I use a room in your house well, to I... play with my chemistry set? No, no. I have vivid and painful memories of helping you with an experiment in your bathroom when you took the cork out and I held the lighted candle. Well, your moustache grew again. No, I'm sorry, James, but my sister wouldn't allow you to come to our house. If only I could have our Susan's room, I'd have been all right. Hey, could our Susan live with you? <laughs> Certainly not. I, I'm afraid you'll just have to put up with things as they are. Of course, in a year or two, Susan may get married and then you'd have a spare room. Who'd marry her? Hey, I know somebody who might. Alfie Hall, he's daft enough. <laughs> if I get moving, he could marry her for next Saturday. <laughs> James, of course he couldn't. Why not? He'll have nothing else to do now the football season's finished. Mother, if that's Alfie, tell him I've gone out. I'll tell him no such thing. Come in, Alfie. Yeah, hello, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, I hope your Susan's in, because last night we had a bit of a tiff, and when we said goodnight, we weren't speaking. Well, what made it worse, you see, was I brought her home on my motorbike, and when she was getting off, she tore her mac on my mud guard, so I thought I'd come round and patch it up. <laughs> yeah, yes, well, that's very noble of you, I'm sure. Well, do you know, I've, I've not slept all night. Oh. Well, it's awful when somebody tells you you're a fool, and you know you can't help it. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you, when you know it's not your fault. Well, I'm, I'm a... Have you got such a thing as a headache, powder? <laughs> you better come in the room and sit down. I'll make you a cup of tea. Well, it, it was all because I wanted more girls than boys. And she said I ought to be satisfied with six of each. You believe in planning well ahead, don't you? Well, we, we haven't all that much time. 
Did the party tomorrow night? Oh, are you a party? Yeah, well, what did you do? Oh, I... <laughs> yeah, I'm a blush. <laughs> no, but I bet I have. <laughs> Hello, Alfie. Yeah, hello, Jimmy. If you come to see our Susan, she says, can you call back? Of course I can. In about 25 years. <laughs> now, that young lady's going too far. You wait here, Alfie. I'll just give her a gentle reminder that when someone calls to see her, she has a duty to her guests. Uh, while we're on our own, I want to have a serious talk with you. Ah, well, you can save your breath. I'm lending you no more money this week. I don't want any. As a matter of fact, uh, I think I've got enough now to buy the wedding present. What, what wedding present? For you and our Susan. You are going to marry her, aren't you? Well, I've, I've not really thought about it. Well, you want to start thinking. She's not getting any younger, you know. <laughs> she won't see 17 and a half again. Yeah, but, but, I, I mean, we, we've not even discussed it. But besides, your Susan's got a lot of boyfriends. She's perhaps still waiting for them to meet the right one. Well, that's you. The first time she brought you to tea, my granddad said, you've got a right one there. <laughs> I must say to you to be very nice. A uh, little cottage on top of hill, and you were Susan waiting for me with me dinner on the fire and me slippers in the oven. <laughs> it, it would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot to me. I could make me own stink bombs. I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, pink ones. Uh, you know, roses round the door. <laughs> but I, I'd like to ask you to marry me, but... Oh, no, it, it'd be too much of a shock. It might bring on a faint. She wouldn't faint. Who's talking about her? <laughs> but besides, I, I wouldn't know what to say. There's nothing to it. I've seen them on the telly. You go down on one knee and say, Without you, I am nothing. Make me a king. Make me a king. What, what happens then? Well, if she doesn't crown you, you're in. <laughs> I will, w wouldn't it be better if I, if I just asked her how she'd like to mend me socks? Oh, hello, Susan. You've just come at the right time, hasn't she, Alfie? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, Susan. Good afternoon, Mr. Hall. Alfie wants to ask you something. Go on, Alfie. Yeah, well, I, 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 I was... Um... He wants to know if you... No, all right, I'll ask her. Well, get on with it, then. Are you going to do that bit on one knee, or aren't you? No, no I'm not. Well, I feel uh... daft. Ask her how you are, then. I don't like. Well, I'll ask her. No. <laughs> I wish somebody would ask something. Uh, have you any brown paper? Yes. Well, wrap up. <laughs> now, are you going to ask her? Jimmy Clitheroe, what's going on? Well, it, it, it's like this, Susan, you see. I, I, I wanted to find out if... if well, what, 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 what I mean is... What, what you can... Well, the, the question is, do you think it'd be possible for the... I, I mean, supposing the two of us found ourselves in... <laughs> could he have a drink of water? <laughs> Just get it over with, you can have champagne. <laughs> Look, Susan, what I'm trying to say is that you, you wouldn't like to grow up into an old maid, but even if you did, I'd want to be with you a bit because I like old maids and... Oh, I... <laughs> Alfie Hall, is this another of your silly jokes? No, it's one of Jimmy's. I mean, it's... Uh... Oh, well, if you're both at it, you'll make a good pair. You're just about the same mental age group. I've had enough, I'm going. Well, you made a right mess of that. Yeah, I made a mess of it. I'm glad to hear you admit it. <laughs> you had me in such a dither, I didn't know what I was doing. All you were doing was dithering. Have a lie down for five minutes while I go and smooth her over. Then you can have another go when you've got your second wind. Oh. Well, look, look, I'll work it out all in my own way. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come round tomorrow and do a proper job on it. And just to make sure, I'll bring a box of chocolates. Good idea. Get peppermint creams. I thought she didn't like them. Who's talking about her? Jimmy. I'm uh, sorry, did I wake you up? <laughs> of course you did, Jimmy. 
Oh, I was in the middle of my afternoon nap. What do you want? Could you move out of the lounge and go and talk to Mr. Craythorpe in the living room? Me talk to that old windbag? I'd never get a word in. Besides, Jimmy, I sneaked in here to get out of his way. Grandad, it's for a very good cause. There needs to be. What's going on? Our Susan's getting married. Susan's getting married? When did you tell you that? Oh, she doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> hey, what are you talking about? Our fall is coming round to propose to our Susan with a box of chocolates, and he says it's ten to one he'll get a hand in marriage. And at sixty-four he'll get my boot where he keeps his brains. Well, he's, he's got big plans for her. They're moving into a cottage. Roses round the door and everything. Who's been telling you fairy tales? Why, well, he hasn't got two pennies to rub together. If he married Susan, he'd expect him to be moving in here and, and, and live with us. You mean we'd have less room in the house than we have now? Well, that's about the size of it. Well, if he thinks his dinner's going in our oven, he's had his chips. <laughs> Oh, Grandad, what a nerve wanting to come and live here after he's married. Instead of getting our Susan room, I'd have to give mine to Alfie. Unless he slept downstairs. No, I'd have to move out. All right. Get yeah, hello, Jim. You've got a cheek asking me to sleep on the sofa. You are. You can just go back where you came from. Leave the chocolates. <laughs> I don't know what you're going on about, but I'm giving these to Susan myself. Where, where is she? She's out. She's gone to Blackpool for a week. Jimmy, if that's our fall, I'll be down in a minute. Sure week, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, I was trying to save you from getting in our Susan's clutches. Well, don't bother. She can clutch me any time she likes. But, but, Alfie, you don't know what she's like. James, your mother wants to know if... And another thing, Susan's bad-tempered. She'd be shouting at you all day and she, and she throws things. You'd have to wear a crash helmet to go on your honeymoon. <laughs> James, what a thing to say. Susan is a charming girl, sweet, pretty... Mr. Craythorpe, I wasn't talking to you. Yeah, well, don't talk to me. I like Susan. But Alfie, she's really awful, really. She 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 she, she paints her toenails and, and dyes her hair and, 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 and they aren't her own teeth. James, this is too much. I can't stand here listening to all those lies. Well, go back to the living room. How dare you? I'm sorry, Mr. Craythorpe, but I don't want Alfie to ask Susan to marry him. I only want to ask her to go to the pictures. You, you what? Well, I can't propose to her now. Why? My mum won't let me. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so, getting me worried? But, James, I thought you wanted uh, Mr. Hall to marry Susan. It's no use anybody marrying her unless they have a house to take her to so that I can have a bedroom. Mr. Craythorpe, you you have a big house. Oh, yes. And, and you're not married. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, but Susan's a charming girl. You said so. Yes, I know. Sweet, I did, but... pretty, yes. never Jane, loses please. her temper. No, I... <laughs> In that recording of the Clitheroe Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Danny Ross, Diana Day and Gordon Rollings. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The programme was written by James Casey and Ronnie Taylor, produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I just came back to tell you Mr. Craythorpe wouldn't marry our Susan, the coward. <laughs> Still, I don't blame him, really. I've tasted her cooking. Cooking? Ooh, she can spoil cornflakes. <laughs> you know those that go snap, crackle and pop? When she's finished with them, they just go... <laughs> By the way, I've had to give up chemistry. They said it was getting on the nerves. Still, I thought of something else that I can play with anywhere in the house without bothering anybody at all. I'm saving up to buy a set of drums. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. 
we present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in... Mother's Day of Rest. <laughs> BBC News. At the end of this bulletin, stand by for an important message. But first of all, here are the latest cricket scores. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, come on! Help! The insects are breaking in! Get off! Get off! Jimmy, wake up! Wake up, Jimmy! Come on, it's Susan! Help! Oh, it's you. <laughs> I thought you were a monster insect from Mars. No wonder you dream about monsters with all those space comics you read. Oh, what a fright. When I saw those horrible staring eyes and that tin head. It was a nightmare. I mean you in your curlers. <laughs> oh, you idiot. You're as funny as a toothache. It's eight o'clock. Come on, get out of bed, lazy lump. All right, sad sack. Oh, oh, I'm out. I'm in again. It's Saturday, clothead. Get up. None of us can sleep this morning. Mother's not... If you don't get out, you'll sleep for a week. Put your nut on this pillar. Oh! Will you listen? <sighs> Mother is ill, so we've all got to help. <sighs> hey? Mum's ill? Yes, she's got pains all over, so she's staying in bed. I phoned for the doctor. Well, why didn't you call me? <laughs> Is Grandad up? When's the doctor coming? Have you given Don't me... Don't panic. Grandad's downstairs now. I might have known she'd be ill. How do you mean? Last night, you cooked the supper. <laughs> well, go on. I want to get dressed. You want to smack on the boxes and clear the room. What would the choir master say? Get ready and make your own bed this morning, if you can. I can. You just go downstairs and wait till he calls for you. Who? The rag and bone man. <laughs> oh, get lost. Oh, why did I get him for a brother? Oh, well. Hello, Mother. Are you quite comfortable? Yes, thank you, dear. Anything you want? No, no, nothing else. I'm afraid I couldn't eat all that breakfast, Susan. Oh, Mother, you haven't touched it. I had the toast and tea. I I'm not hungry. All I want is a good rest. And that's what you're going to have. I'll see no one disturbs you all day. Are you all right, Mum? Where are the pains? Do you want some aspirins? Uh, no, no, no. I'm just a bit under the weather, Jimmy. I'm, I'm just going to have a day in bed, that's all. Well, don't worry about anything, Mum. I'll see nobody makes a noise or bothers you. Thank you, son. Oh, uh, Mum, uh, shall I wear me grey pants or uh, me jeans? Well, I... Uh... Put what you like on. Don't worry, Mother, about your jeans. My jeans? It's your jeans that worry me, Mum. They're so tight you need a potato peeler to get them off. <laughs> Now, look here. One knee's bend and, and you'll be locked up. Oh, will please. you shut up? Please, please, stop it. I'm sorry, Mother. I should think you are. Mum's ill, you know. 
All right, Jimmy, that's enough from you. Yes, Mum, I won't say another word. Good. The next time Susan tries to cause her out, I'll just ignore her. Oh, what a boy. I'm sorry, Mother. I'll see that it doesn't happen again. Mum, where are my clean socks? Oh, dear. <laughs> They're in the drawer in your wardrobe, Mark Socks. That's the only place I didn't look. <laughs> now lie down, Mum, and have a good rest. Thank you. He's hopeless. I'd better go and sort him out before he thinks of something else to worry you. Too late. Hey, Mum, have you seen my roller skates? Oh. Mother wants to get some rest. Well, why don't you go downstairs and leave her alone, then? <laughs> um, uh, shall I take this breakfast tray down for you? Yes, please, anything, so long as you... Yes, just take it down. Hey, you've left it all, Mum. I couldn't eat it, love. Well, I'll take it next door for their dog. He won't know Susan cooked it. Oh! <laughs> Susan, save it up till I'm on my feet and then we'll both deal with him. Oh, Susan, what was that? Jimmy, what happened? I found one of my roller skates. <laughs> oh, what's going to happen next? He's all right, Mother. Now, don't worry. Just lie back and rest. Rest? I'd get more rest on the Big Dipper at Blackpool. <laughs> Shut up, Ozzy. You're home now. You'll soon get those wet clothes off. It's all right for you. You're not wet. <laughs> and you wouldn't have been wet if you weren't daft. Fancy trying to leap across a stream in two jumps. <laughs> I did not. Come on, open up. Your son's dripping all over the place. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Luke, your tears making little clean spots all over your mother's mucky step. <laughs> I'll tell my dad and you. Oh, tell your dad. I'm not scared of him, the big lanky sticker rhubarb. <laughs> He's as daft as you. Hello, Mr. Rhubarb, a Higginbottom. What the heck? What's happened? <laughs> Stream. But don't worry, he's not hurt. Not yet he isn't. Get in there, you little hooligan. He'll be all right when he gets dry. Who cares about him? Those pants cost me 15 bob. My grand... granddad said they look like yours cut down. Shut up, you cheeky young puppy. Oh, and you, you sniveller. Dad, I'm cold. Get in the house, then. Oh, if you hit me, I'll tell me, Mum. Don't bother, I'll tell her. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. I've just clouted that little brat of yours. <laughs> Ta -ra, Mr. Higginbottom. Just a minute, I'm not finished with you. But shouldn't you go in and clout Ozzy again? I mean, I'll have your dinner. <laughs> it's very funny that Ozzy's soaking wet and your bone dry. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, uh, yes, it is, isn't it? Ta -ra. Come here. What happened? Oh, Ozzy and me and Charlie Thompson were playing Olympic Games. Go on. Well, Charlie won the pole vault, because he's a Boy Scout. Eh? What's that got to do with it? Well, he was the only one with a pole. <laughs> <laughs> then I won the hop, step and a jump, but Ozzy said I'd twisted, so I... Uh, we, um, talked it over. Yes. Then Ozzy admitted he was wrong, and I got off his head and... <laughs> he said... Oh, uh, he said he could beat my record blindfolded, so I bet him threatens, tied a hanky round his eyes, and that's where it went wrong. Look, how did Ozzy get in the stream? Well, he must have been pointed in the wrong direction. Because instead of a hop, step and a jump, he did a hop, step and a belly flopper. Oh. <laughs> I'll come in there, Susan. Well, did you get everything from a chemist? Yes, eventually. Did you cope with Mother all right? Of course. And what's more, I fixed the lunch. A nice boiled ham salad. Oh, no. Aye. It's all out in the plates in the kitchen. 
I slipped into the shop in the corner while you were out. But I have a stew cooking in the oven. I wondered what that funny smell was in it. I mean, the appetizing smell was out there. Oh, well, we can have the ham for supper. Here we are. Come and get it. What? I brought you lunch, fish and chips. Oh, Jimmy, you haven't. We're spending a week's money on one meal. For lunch today, we now have ham salad, stew, fish and chips. What's for afters? <laughs> Jimmy, we've overdone it. Look, while Mother's ill, I'm going to run things. Oh, yes. Yes. I'll decide what the meals are to be, I'll buy the food, and I'll cook it. And you'll eat it, cos I won't. <laughs> now then, Jimmy. I'll eat it if you cook it, Grandad. <laughs> no, no, Susan's quite a good little cook. Well, why did you throw your fish in the dustbin last Friday? Did you, Grandad? I saw him with a close bed on his nose. <laughs> now, Jimmy, now, now, don't make things worse. Uh, uh, my, my, my stomach was a bit off color. Now, I, uh, well, you know, I didn't want to think you to be offended. Honestly, I, I didn't even taste the fish. No, the smell was enough. <laughs> I went outside and two cats were in the dust and fighting. Oh, so what? They were fighting to get out. <laughs> Very well, then. If that's the way you both feel. I'll take no notice. Hey, Susan. Jimmy, you apologize to Susan at once. What for? About her cooking. All right. Susan, I'm sorry you're a rotten cook. <laughs> well, of all well, You apologize properly or you'll be across my knee. Now, go on. I'm sorry, Susan. I apologize. Right. Let's say no more. We'll have Susan's stew for lunch. And stomach powder for a sweet. <laughs> Who's at the door, please, Jimmy? Yes, boss. And if it's somebody I don't like, I'll ask them to stay for lunch. <laughs> oh, Grandad, you'll have to do something with him. He's been nothing but trouble all morning. Until Ozzy called for him, Mother didn't have a minute's peace. Oh, come now, be fair, Susan. He's been trying to help. Oh, yes. He's dropped a tray on the stairs, spilled a cup of tea on Mother's eider down, washed up and broke three plates... And when Mother did get off to sleep for a minute, he woke her up to ask her if she wanted to borrow any of his space comics. Come in, Mr. Craythorpe. Thank you, James. Hello, Susan. Mr. Sinclair. Hello, Mr. Craythorpe. Oh, it's you. Hello. Hello. I was dreadfully sorry to hear about Mrs. Clithero, and my sister thought you might be rather harassed, so Guess I... what? He's brought a pie for lunch. That's all we need. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll have a stroll around the garden before lunch. I need to work up an appetite. Oh, I hope I haven't done the wrong thing. Can I assure you? It's very kind of you, Mr. Craythorpe. Oh, we have arranged lunch, but I'll put it away for a Christmas dinner. We haven't bought that yet. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Is something burning? Oh, my lunch. It'll be growing. We've a little bit so lucky. Oh, what a pity. Yes, isn't it? Now we'll have to settle for boiled ham or fish and chips. What was Susan going to give you? Food poison. Hey, Susan, you don't have pull some funny faces when you're putting lipstick on. You're as bad as me granddad when he's shaving. You want to look at your own thing. That's funny any time. Oh, very clever. You ought to be a comedian. Is that so? Yes, you look like Ken Dodd. <laughs> oh, get out of my way. Oh, thank goodness it stopped raining. Are you going out with Alfie Hall when my mum's ill? I'm not going out at all. Bill is coming round this afternoon. And if you see him, don't mention Alf Hall. Oh, Billy's jealous, is he? Just keep quiet, that's all. Well, there I was, chatting to your mother about the Women's Guild, and suddenly I found she was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I left her to it. <laughs> How about a game of blow football, Mr. Craythorpe? No, thank you, James. You caught me with that last week. Oh, what was that, Mr. Craythorpe? Well, you know the uh, shooter one blows through at, at the ball? Well, when James blew through his... I forgot he... I had a mouthful of peas. <laughs> oh, I'll bet you forgot... Hey, look who's coming up the path. I wonder what he wants. You, if it's soppy, Billy. 
it's Mr. Higginbottom coming here. Oh, heck. Susan, go and tell him I'm out. I will not. Mr. Craythorpe, come on, you tell him. Uh, don't pull me, James. I'm coming. Uh, uh, what can I tell him? Oh, tell him I've been called up to the scouts or anything. Uh, very well. I, I'll do my best to get rid of him. Uh, oh, Mr. Higginbottom, I'm afraid you can't... Out of my way, Craythorpe. Where's that little... Oh, there you are. Ozzy's told me the truth. He told me what really happened. You pushed him in the stream. Oh, Mr. Riggenbottom, you're pulling my tie. I know. <laughs> I'm going to show you sailors not. Take your hands off that boy's tie. If I do, I'll put them round your windpipe. <laughs> if you lay one finger on me... What? I'll scream for help. Susan, dial 999 and tell them there's a madman here. Ah, and get an ambulance for Claythorpe and your brother. Stop <laughs> shouting. My mother's ill in bed. Yes, you ruffian. Have a care. What's going on down there? There you are. You've woke me, Mum. Well, I'll make up for it by putting a son to sleep. <laughs> if you touch him, I'll strike you with my umbrella. Susan, what is it? It's Mr Higginbottom, Mother. He's come to... Uh... To see you, Mum. Now, look here. Now, if you upset that lady by telling her whatever it is James has done, then I'll upset your wife. You what? I saw you coming out of the Rosen Crown last night. And it wasn't the landlord you were sitting with. <laughs> it was the barmaid's birthday, that's all. <laughs> well, perhaps your wife would like to give her a present. And you. Now listen. Susan, ask Mr. Higginbottom to come up now if he's coming. Come on, Mr. Higginbottom, we'll all keep quiet. But what can I say? I don't know how to cope with women. It's a pity it isn't my mum's birthday. <laughs> Mr. Higginbottom and Mr. Craythorpe. Uh, thank you, James. Come in, please. Oh, uh, thanks, Missus. I'm sorry to see you. In bed, I mean. <laughs> well, it was very nice of you to call. <laughs> <laughs> seems the rain to seems hearing... to... <laughs> I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> 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 It, it was nice of Mr. Higginbottom to call, wasn't it? Mum said that. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it was very nice of you to call, Mr. Higginbottom, so you could cheer me mum up. <laughs> what did you say, Mr. Higginbottom? Nothing. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Mrs. Higginbottom. As nasty as ever. I mean, she's rather upset. She's annoyed with Ozzy. Oh, well, you know what boys are. Yes, some of them are a little... Um, uh, uh, Oswald had an unfortunate accident. He's rather wet. He always is having accidents. And you'll have an accident in a minute if you're not careful. What's the matter? Well, this little... The barmaid. The barmaid. <laughs> Yes, uh, she told uh, she told Mr. Higginbottom when he was collecting his bottles that James should be careful uh, on his bike, uh, his brakes, you know. Oh well, you mustn't go out on it again, Jimmy. Not until they're fixed. Oh, uh, I'll see to that, Mrs. Clitheroe. Um, we'll have a walk down to our house, son, and I'll fix you up there. I know you will. <laughs> I'll see who it is, Susan. There's somebody at the door. He's quick, you know. He's not just an ugly face. <laughs> oh, it's you, Alfie. Hello, Mr. Sinclair. <laughs> <laughs> <That's late. laughs> Get away. Alfie, I thought you were just tired. Oh, I hope Father doesn't bring him up here. I just don't think I could cope with him today. He goes rattling on about nothing until you... So I bought some fruit at the market, but the bus was late and I missed my dinner and I was that hungry, I'd forgotten there, the apples. <laughs> but I don't like oranges, so I brought them. You're standing on me foot. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I, I'll take the oranges and eat them. I, I mean, give them to Mrs. Clitheroe. Yeah, because yeah, they're good for your oranges. <laughs> yeah, I don't like them, but my granddad swears by them. But he's always swearing, you see, because he was in the cavalry. But, you know, he eats his skin and the pips and he says it's good for your complexion. He eats bones as well. You know, oh, he's smashing. He's 85 with a lovely complexion and broken teeth. <laughs> Susan, will you come in here, please? What is it, Grandad? 
Did you, uh... Oh, what are you doing here, Alfie? Well, well, I heard you. Don't uh... wind him up again. He's brought some oranges for your mother. He ate the apples because the bus was late, and I'm going in the garden. <laughs> what was all that about? Hey, don't ask me. You know, sometimes I can't understand the word he says. <laughs> Alfie, I, I wasn't expecting you today. No, I wasn't expecting myself. No, to, to come here, I mean. <laughs> No, you see, Theodore Cradock, Threythrod, he told my man that your man was in bed when she was doing the washing. Oh. So she told me to go to the market for some fruit and take the bundle to my Auntie Mary. Uh, a bundle of fruit? No, not washing. Oh. Yeah, you see, my man's got his spin dryer and Auntie Mary couldn't dry her own things because my Uncle Bert chopped up a clothes prop. By accident? Oh, no. No, Auntie Mary kept it and him with it. Oh, well, James, I'm glad we got rid of Higginbottom. So am I, but I think I'll keep out of his way for a bit. When he said goodbye, I, I didn't like the way he patted me on the head with his knuckles. <laughs> oh, hello, Alfred. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hey, Alfie, you shouldn't be here. I, I mean, Jimmy. Well, if he gets spotted by you-know-who, there'll be a uh, you-know-what to pay. I know. Uh, Alfie was just leaving, weren't you? What was that? Where, where am I going? <laughs> well, you see, I've got a lot to do and... and... she's waiting for somebody else to call. Eh? Uh, the doctor. He's coming back. Uh, come to the door and I'll explain. Oh, well, I'll see you all again next time it's your the rose hill. I mean, the next time I come. <laughs> <laughs> was, was Susan trying to get rid of him? Yes, she's expecting Billy Parker, her passion flower. So she's getting rid of the dandelion first. <laughs> Oh, that's done it. Susan, come here quick. What do you want? Come here if you don't want to be an old maid. What are you talking about? Sir Lancelot is just parking his fiery steed. You what? Billy Parker's just getting off his motorbike. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, Alfie, don't go yet. Jimmy, get Alfie out of the way. Mm, like you did with Mr Higginbottom. Mm. All right, I'll do it. So long as you don't tell me, Mum, about me borrowing a shilling. When did you borrow a shilling? Now, hand it over. <laughs> James, that's blackmail. All right, you get rid of Alfie. Oh, quick, Billy's coming up the path. Oh, here's your shilling, you gangster. Thank you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Jim. Oh, romance can be so complicated. I remember when my youngest sister met the leader of the Band of Hope. I'll let Billy wait a minute. It'll give Jimmy time to get Alfie out the back way. Oh, what a day this has been. I don't know where I am. It's all right, Alfie. Mum, Mum, you're not asleep, are you? No, I just hoped you might think I was. Well, get your head from under the bedclothes. Alfie Hall's come to see you. That's all I've been waiting for. <laughs> Hello, Alfie. It's nice to see you. Well, well I, I was going home, but Jimmy said you wanted to see me, so here I am. I'd like to see you alone afterwards, Jimmy. Or perhaps Grandad had better come up with you. He's stronger than I am. <laughs> it's not very nice being in bed on you. Yeah. We have nobody to talk to. Oh, Jimmy says I'm not left alone too long. He keeps popping in with someone every five minutes. <laughs> well, I know when I was ill, I got fed up. I started talking to myself. You're, st you're still doing it. Huh? <laughs> Well, I was glad when anybody called because my mum used to send them up with me knitting needles. You knit? Mum, don't be nasty. <laughs> I mean, does he knit with the knitting needles? Oh, no. <laughs> no, you see, I, I broke my ankle and when I got a visitor, I used to let them scratch my leg inside the plaster. Alfie, Alfie, I think we'd better go. My mum's getting that blank look. Well, <laughs> well to the Mrs. Clither, I hope you're soon better. Well, if you don't want me to stay soon... Of course I do, Billy. But you see... Get back, Alfie. Get up. <laughs> What's the idea? Uh, Alfie wants to tell you something. Do, do I? Yes, a, a joke. The one you told us yesterday. Now, look, I'm trying to Ooh, get just... Oh, you laugh little... at this, ma'am. Go on, Alfie. Well, well, well you, you see... It's a long one, ma'am, and I've heard it. So I'll pop down and see if it's clear. Uh, if the tea's are made. Jimmy, you come here! Well, oh. there was an English one and I was <sighs> I nearly lost my shilling then. <laughs> James, where have you been? Did Alfred go? He, he's with Mum. Where's Billy? In the lounge with Susan, and he's rather suspicious. Uh, we'd better keep our voices down. They haven't closed the door. Hey, let's hear how she's doing. 
I'm sorry, Susan. I promise I won't be jealous anymore. I should think not. You should be ashamed. She wouldn't be so cocky if she knew where Alfie was. <laughs> James, you can't listen at the door. Not while you've got your ear all at the keel. <laughs> well, just show you forgive me. Give me a little kiss. All right, then. He's had it. She's getting sloppy. <laughs> One kiss and he's helpless. James, this is dreadful. Sickening, I call it. I'd better break it up now. If she really gets cracking, it'll take five minutes to bring him round. <laughs> Here we go. All right, Marlon Brando. Did Bridget Bardock? One more smacker and then you're off. <laughs> Why don't you get lost? You are a bit of a nuisance, Jim. So are you. I mean, Mum wants to see our Susan, so you'll have to go home. Don't be ridiculous. You know who didn't go you know where. And he'll be here any minute. Um, oh. The doctor, I mean, uh, Billy. Oh, well, um, uh, would you mind coming back this evening, Billy? Well, all right. Uh, I'll see you later, then. Hey, Mr. Craythorpe, have you seen Jimmy anything? On second thoughts, stay a bit. Susan, get back on his knee. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, I I'm going now, so I'll set her up. Alfie Hall, so he is here. Hello, Alfie. Oh, what a surprise. Susan, Alfie's just arrived. Oh. Uh, yeah, yes, that's it. I, I just let it in. No, oh, it after I've been here for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't some mothers have them. <laughs> Susan Clitheroe, you're nothing but a Jezebel. Uh, no, no, don't no. Don't talk to me like that. Hey, no, less of that or I'll pump you. You what? I'll murder you. No, no, let's talk this over. Come on, then, big mouth. Don't you dare fight in here. What's going on here? It sounds like a public house brawl. And he ought to know. <laughs> now, come on, come on now. Just clear out of it, both of you. Go on now, go on. And that's the end of round three. Come in, Barrington Crater. <laughs> I'll get it, Grandad. I'm sorry, Mr. Sinclair. Goodbye, Susan. Well, I, I, I was only trying to... Well, <laughs> goodbye, and don't either of you come back. Oh, don't be too harsh, Mr. Sinclair. They're only boys. What? My daughter upstairs ill? She's had no rest all day, and now this girl and her boyfriend start fighting. Well, I'm sorry. Now, now let's all calm down, and perhaps Mrs. Clitheroe can at last get some rest. Mum, it's Mrs. Eccles on the phone. She wants to know how you are. Oh! You're here. Oh, that boy. But what are you doing out of bed? Hang up the phone, Jimmy. I want to make a call to your Auntie Mabel in Wigan. Me Auntie Mabel? Yes, I'm going to ask her if she's got a spare room for the weekend. It's the only way I'll ever get any rest. Well, you might catch cold on the train, Mum. <laughs> I'm staying here. You're the one who's going to Wigan. <laughs> In that recording of the Clitheroe Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Danny Ross, Diana Day, Peter Goodright, and Tony Mellory. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The programme, which was written and produced by James Casey, starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I thought I'd better come back to tell you I didn't go to Wigan. My Auntie Mabel said she couldn't take me because the house wasn't insured. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Craythorpe let me stay with him for the weekend and we had a smashing time when his sister was out of the way. Luckily, on Saturday afternoon, I managed to... Um, uh, she accidentally got locked in the um, coal shed. <laughs> By the way, my mum's better. She's got her strength back. That's why I'm having my tea standing up. Ta-da! Present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Diana Day as Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in The Wheels of Misfortune. Why don't they give you a chance to make these slips 
bigger. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I've got one. If I just sit underneath it. Oh, heck. That Susie's nail file gone in now. <laughs> I'll have to have another go with this knife. Just sit it again. It's harder than getting money out of my granddad. <laughs> when I did his own work for him. Twelve things and only gave me is a button. It's a good job for him. I got him all wrong. <laughs> Jimmy, have you seen that? Jimmy, what are you doing with that money box? Uh, putting this button back, ma'am. <laughs> Don't let me catch you trying to take that money out of that money. I'm just sneaked up in your carpet slippers. <laughs> I don't know what you do with your money. Where's the thing you bought it off me last night? On its way to Blackpool. Blackpool? Yes, well, you see, Ozzy's mum's taking him to Blackpool for the weekend, and he charged me a shilling to borrow his racing bike. Oh, it's just shilling? Well, I don't call him much of a friend. Neither do I. I only charged him nine pence to borrow my frog. <laughs> Ozzy borrowed a frog? Yes, he wanted to play a joke. He put the frog in his dad's lunchbox. <laughs> Ozzy laughed that much, he nearly cried. <laughs> He did cry when his dad came home. Yeah. Well, there'll be a few tears here if you don't keep your hands off that money box. Ooh, I wish I was a laddin'. Then I could get all the money I wanted. If this money box was a lamp, I'd only need to rub it like this. And the genie would appear. Oh, there you are, Pat. Oh, it's the wrong genius. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to slip down the road with these empty bottles. I thought so. It's the genie with the light brown ale. <laughs> Jimmy, what are you blathering about? Oh, he's given us a shilling for the loan of his bike. So now he's broke again. Oh, I can't understand you boys up to date. The way you spend money. Now, when I was your age... Here we go again. Back to Bannockburn. <laughs> what was that? Uh, nothing, Grandad. Well, I didn't have it easy. I had to work for what I got. No. Up at six o'clock every morning, first milking the cows, <laughs> then feeding the pigs, all I've got was a penny a week. And have to pay it for your own porridge. <laughs> You're asking for a good smack. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I know it better than he does. I mean... All right, all right, clever boy. But you could learn a lot from the people of my generation. Now look at Lord Nuffield. Started as a boy, repairing bicycles in a shed. Today he's worth millions. In fact, he gives millions away every year. Uh, it's a full-time job getting rid of all the money he earns. Where does he live? I'll give him a hand. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, if you're willing to work and you've got an eye for business, you can't start young enough. Well, I'm starting tomorrow with all these racing bikes. And I reach out to the lads at sixpence an hour. I'll go around now and get a few mudders. I'll make a fortune. Oh, don't be silly. Look, if things go according to plan... I might be able to send Lord Nuffield a few, Bob. Yeah, he's a wee scamp, that one, Pat. He's got an answer for everything. You wouldn't think so from his school report. Oh, school's a thing of the past now. He's got an eye for big business. Yeah. All right, Father. I'll see to the door. Well, I'll get away done with these empties. I'll see you later. Oh, hello, see? What are you doing here? Yeah, have you got the right time, if you please? <laughs> I've lost one of the fingers off me watching. I don't know whether it's dead on six. They're half past something or other. <laughs> well, what bothers me is I'm picking up your Susan, and until I find out whether I'm late or early, I don't know whether to throw me up and start bragging. And would you like one of my crystal stars? <laughs> no, 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 thank you, Alfie. Are you sure it's tonight you're meeting Susan? Because she went out about half an hour ago. Oh, it was definitely tonight, I think. <laughs> well, it couldn't have been last night because I saw it any time. She didn't give me a dirty look. And uh, you can't be tomorrow because I always go to my aunties on Friday. Today's Friday. Well, nearly always. <laughs> you, you know it's awful, though I can never remember what they arrange with yours, Susan. Yeah, I'm all right until I come to say good night, and then as soon as I get hold of her aunt, my mind goes blank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm relieved to hear it. Anyway, Susan's not in, and I've no idea where she's gone. Oh, here's Jimmy. Perhaps he knows. Jimmy, Alfie's called to pick up our Susan. Well, he's lucky she's gone out. 
He got some mug lined up to take to the pictures. <laughs> yeah, hey, I have just remembered. I was taking it to the pictures. And can't you remember whether you were the mug or not? <laughs> There's no way to talk about your sister's boyfriend. Just try and be helpful. I- I'm sorry, I'll see. You'll have to excuse me. I've got to go around and see Mrs. Billington right now. Yeah, you did give me trying things. Did you Susan not give you a clue where she was going? Well, according to the paint she put on her face, she was going to a war dance. <laughs> I could see she was going to make a fool out of somebody. If I'd known it was you, I could have told her she was too late. Yeah, well, that, that would have been very kind of it. Yeah, I'll bat your ear all in a minute. I'm in enough trouble with her. Oh, oh, hey, you just come back to me. Yeah, I said I'd meet her outside the plaza. You slipped up there. If you'd let her inside, you could have saved one and nine. <laughs> Never mind that. When does the next bus go past your house? Uh, there's one at 22. That'll do nicely. Going the other way. <laughs> well, how am I going to get there? There's only one thing for it. You'll have to use Clitheroe Cycling Service. Yeah, how do you mean? You borrow a bike and pay as you pedal. Oh, I see. Yeah, hey, what a good idea. I'll borrow that red racing bike in your garden. I'll be down there in five minutes. I'll see you later, Jimmy. Hey, where are you going? Yeah, I'm borrowing your bike to go and meet Susan. Oh, not so fast. We've got to discuss the money yet. Besides, we've not found out whether you know how to ride a racing bike. I, um, I have to test you first. Um, can you pay five bob deposit? Yeah, I thought so. You're fast. <laughs> Sixpence an hour, and you get your deposit back when you return the bike. Yeah, all right. Yeah, now, what, what about the bike, Cliff? Oh, uh, here you are. That'll be Portland Extra. The three-pound bike, Cliff. I oh, know, they're a pair of me mum's glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your form. I hope you know how to ride a racer. You won't forget it's a fixed wheel. Well, what does that mean? It means you can't free wheel. When you stop pedaling the bike, the bike pedals you. Yeah, yes, well, I'll be careful. And mind you don't get your front wheels stuck in the tram line. I don't want to have to come looking for you at the depot. Yeah. It's easier to make money than I thought. That's three hours at sixpence an hour. Then I can tell him he's lost his deposit for leaving the bike unattended. <laughs> oh, don't tell me he's fallen off already. Now what do you want? Uh, I beg your pardon, James. I came to see your mother. Oh, Mr. Craythorpe, come in. My mum's out. I thought you were out behind the two-wheeled terror. <laughs> that way handles the bicycle is certainly terrifying. He just wobbles past me, riding on both sides of the road. So with an occasional dash onto the pavement. Oh, heck, if he damages that bike, Mr. Higginbottom will stick the pump in the ear and blow me brains out. <laughs> What's it got to do with Mr. Higginbottom? Dr. Higginbottom's bike, and I'll link it to Alfie. What for? One and six. I mean, <laughs> you go and meet our Susan at the plaza. And Higginbottom doesn't know Alfie's got it. He doesn't know I've got it. How'd you lend it to me for a shilling? You should have asked Mr. Higginbottom as well. I couldn't afford another shilling for him. <laughs> I'll take the bike back tomorrow night. I'll sneak it into the shed while Mr. Higginbottom's out at five past six. Why, five past? The Rose and Crown opens at six on Saturday. <laughs> and Grandad says, as soon as the clock strikes the hour, Mr. Higginbottom's boot kicks the door. <laughs> Your grandfather shouldn't make such remarks to you. What? Have you heard his joke about Higginbottom? He cracks it three times a week. Higginbottom carried his butt again in the Rose and Crown. First man in, last man out. <laughs> Believe me, ma'am, now, Mr. Crayford. Oh, Grandad's always making cracks about Mr. Higginbottom. Calls him Hollerleg. And he, he says he should change his name to Bottomless Higgins. What, Mr. Higginbottom? You talking about me? Who? You? Me? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's very amusing. Hello, Meg. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Higginbottom? That's the other. Bottom, Mr. Higginbottom! Come in, please. I'm not deaf. I think Mr. Craythorpe is. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Craythorpe's here. It's Mr. Higginbottom. Oh, hello, Higginbottom. It's you. I thought you were Mrs. Kidrow. It's probably the way I walk. <laughs> Oh, very witty, very so. All right, all right, don't get it silly, lad. I didn't come here to slap you. Well, who did you... Come here. I 
Where is he? Eh? Where is he? Upstairs and first on the right. <laughs> Where's Ozzy's bike? Ozzy's what? Bike. Ozzy's bike. You know, a thing with two wheels, a frame, handlebars, and pedals. It sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> What do you mean? No saddle. You won't be able to sit in a saddle if I get my... Uh, now, 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 we must keep our heads. We'd better shut our mouths. <laughs> Look, Oswald's bike is not here. But if you want to know where it is... Ask Wilfred Pickles. Ask Wilfred Pickles. <laughs> Take I like turn, Mush. I don't want any funny remarks from you. If I decide to knit a pair of bed socks, I'll ask you for your advice. Until I do, close your tail. <laughs> oh, charming. You must invite me to one of your next school reunions and show me your old cell. <laughs> no, try the clever stuff on me. I didn't go to no reform school. Oh, I see. You're a self-made now. Yes, eh? <laughs> now, listen there. You're asking for it. Look at The bike's not here. You can search the house. I can see that, but where is it? I don't know. I haven't got it. Search me as well if you like. All right. I can't prove anything yet. If I find you print that bike, you'll be wearing the wheel for a collar. I was thinking, Mr. Higginbottom, I might just happen to find it. Yes, and if you just happen to find it, they'll just happen to find you swimming <laughs> in a sack. Mr. Claythorpe. You upset him, you know. Well, I like that. Well, I don't. <laughs> you could get me into trouble. Now, just a minute. You borrowed the bicycle, so if you get into trouble, you can blame yourself. And your lies will only have made things worse. What lies? I told him the truth. James, you said you hadn't got the bicycle. I haven't. Alfie's got it. Oh, well, you said you didn't know where it is. I don't. Of course you do. Alfie's got it. Where? At the pictures, the plaza. Where? In the car park behind the cinema. To be exact, in one of the bicycle racks they have there. To be exact, which rack? I don't know. There you are. We don't know where the bike is. <laughs> I've got to get that bike back to Hickenbottom as well. He's still out searching. Yes, you're right, James. I've got to get it from the plaza to their house. Yes. Through the town. Yes. And I'm not allowed to ride in the traffic. No. no so you better get sorted. Right. <laughs> No, James, I couldn't. I, I don't know whether I can still ride a bicycle. Well, now's your chance to find out. Oh, it's dead easy. A fixed wheel, so the pedals never stop going round. <laughs> well, I certainly couldn't pedal all that way, non stop. Well, if you want to rest, put your feet on the handlebars. <laughs> now, now, look here, James. Oh, all right, don't go. It doesn't matter if Mr. Bacon Bottom finds me out. You don't care if I'm flung in the river in a sack with a bicycle <laughs> over me, don't <laughs> Now, James, don't get upset. Please don't say He won't murder me, really. He'll just butter me with his mouth. <laughs> with the book of ending off. Oh, all right, James. I I'll go. Good. Now there's a bus at seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> No good arguing, Arthur Hall. If you think I'm going to the pictures now, after waiting nearly an hour for you, you can just think again. But it's soon. I, I keep telling you, we're only ten minutes late. I don't know. I missed you. It doesn't matter. I feel most humiliated. Well, honestly, you don't, Lucy. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been dashing about searching for you everywhere. First of all, I went in the one and nines, and you weren't there, so I, I came out and went in the two and sixes, and you weren't there, so I came out and I'd have gone in the three and fours, only I'd spent up. The woman in the pay box thought I was posse. She kept saying, what's the matter? Can't you make up your mind whether you like it or not? I don't believe you looked for me at all. I did. I even looked in the gentleman's cloak room. <laughs> now, what would I be doing in there? Well, I thought you might have been looking for me. Oh, I've had a terrible time. There was somebody very much like you sitting in the back row of the stall. She was eating peppermint cream. How do you know? She gave me one. <laughs> yeah, I, I was sure it was you, so I leaned over and I whispered, Is that the reason to end it all? And she kept staring at the screen and said, No, I think it's Kathleen Eckburn. <laughs> well, it's the last time I arranged to meet you outside the pictures. Well, I did my best to find you. Well, I even described you to a commissioner. But you, you can ask him because he made an awful measurement. <laughs> really? That's true. 
I don't know if I got them right, but when I said 48, 22, 39, he wanted me to shout seats in all parts while he went in and looked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that settles it. I certainly won't go near the pictures now. I'm catching the next bus home. Yeah, I'll be a poor Susan. It's a smashing film. Rob Sider's in it. He plays the part of a ship's captain and he gets involved with his woman passenger who doesn't know that she's snogging with a person's wife. And then when this other one finds him together in the chart room, she gets the first mate to blackmail the purpose so that he'll think he's the captain and have it out with him on the dog watch. And in the end, she finds out the captain's already married. And in a fit of jealousy, she shoots the first mate and tries to blame it on the purser's wife. But what she doesn't know is that she's already poisoned the purse and thrown herself overboard. <laughs> yeah, you'll like it, it's a comedy. <laughs> know a lot about the film. Well, it should do. I've seen it twice. Well, what do you want to see it again for? Well, I, I don't really. Only I thought while you were watching the film, I, I could watch you. <laughs> and then if you happen to miss any of it, I, I could fill in the details. I'll have you know, Algie Hall, that when I go to the cinema, I go to watch the picture. Ooh, good. Don't you get bored? I would. <laughs> well, I won't run that risk. When the next bus comes, I'm getting on it. Oh, all right, then I'll come home with you. Oh, hey, I've I just remembered I came on a bike. Yeah, I'll have to go and get it out of the bike rack. Oh, see, you're impossible. The next time you ask me to go to the pictures with you, I'll know to come dressed for a treasure hunt. Oh, now, don't worry. The bike rack's only around this corner. And how are we going to get home with one bike between the two of us? Well, I thought I'd ride the bike and you, you could sit on the crossbar. Oh, I look nice, sitting on a bike in my tight skirt. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you ride the bike and I'll walk behind. <laughs> that does it. I'm going on the bus. Hey, hey, where is the bike? Yeah, I'll let it here at this end. It's gone. Nothing will surprise me anymore. You wait till you see yours in his face. Oh, I'll ask our commissioner if he's seen anybody take it. Yeah, hey, mister. Oh, then. Are you still looking for your girlfriend? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking for a red racer. Well, I wish you'd make your mind up. You told me she was a brown-eyed brunette. Oh. Yeah, I've found my girlfriend. I'm looking for a red racing bike. I'll let you hear in this, right? Oh, wait a minute. A red racing bike. A red racing... A red racing bike. Hmm. Hmm. A red racing bike. I'm only looking for one, you know. <laughs> I've got it. Well, what are you doing with it? No, I haven't got it, but I, I think I can put you onto it. Well, I can get on it myself when I find it. <laughs> look, look, look. About a quarter past seven, a middle-aged fellow with glasses. Very nervous type, that's it. I thought he looked suspicious the way he leaned it against the dustbin to cock his leg over the saddle. Oh! <laughs> well, he's the one who pinched it. Hey, well, we've got to find him. Oh, well, that shouldn't be difficult. All you've got to do is look for a fellow riding the red racing bike with his hand caught in a dustbin lift. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Crayso, where are you? Grandad, what time is it now? It's a quarter to eight, I've just told you. Pretty good don't off the coach. You'll knock the stuffing out of it, Jimmy. I'll knock the stuffing out of him if he doesn't hurry up. <laughs> Sit down and stop muttering. Yes, Grandad. Now, it's nearly bedtime. Do you want your cooker now? Yes, please. Make it a strong one. All right. I'll, I'll go and do it now, and, and then you can get ready for your bed. Jimmy, is Mr. Crayfork upstairs? If he is, there'll be a heck of a crash when he pedals down. What are you talking about? He went out to pick something up. <laughs> oh, you mean shopping? Uh, yes, he went to uh, buy a bike. Uh, a little bike. Uh, a present. Uh, for a little boy he knows. Oh, dear, I hope he won't be long. Mrs. Billington's called a special meeting of the Women's Guild for 8 o'clock, and I said I'd bring Theodore. If he's late, she'll go up in the air. So will I, on the end of a rope. <laughs> I can't understand it. Neither can I. That time to ride to London. On the bus, I mean. Oh, well, I, I'll just have to go. Will you tell Mr. Crayford to come straight round to Mrs. Billington? Right, old man. Good night. Good night. Now, be a good boy. And in bed by end. Yeah. Bye-bye, Father. Uh, goodbye, Pat. Uh, come on, Jimmy, now. Here's your toko. Thanks, Grandad. What time is it? Not again. I feel like the girl who answers you when you dial Tim. You don't look like her. <laughs> Tim, that. I'll go. It'll be Red Harrison's grandfather. Please, <laughs> Jim Crayford. Oh, I wasn't experienced. <laughs> oh. oh, get me a glass of water. Let me sit down. Oh, 
Don't you think how comfortable if you sat on a chair with a soft cushion? Come in. You look awful. Oh, look at my suit and my nose. Oh, I think I'm dying. <laughs> well, when you finish, will you go around to Mrs. Billington? Theodore, what's happened to you? You look as though you've been in an accident. Oh, worse. I've been in the hands of Higginbottom, the missing link. Oh, he's an animal, a savage, a yahoo. A beatnik. A beatnik. Don't you dare try to be funny. Theodore, do you mean Higginbottom attacked you? Like a madman. I was riding along on Oswald's bicycle when this great hairy hand grabbed my collar <laughs> and hurled me against the wall. He demanded to know where I had got the bicycle, how long I'd had it, where I'd been. Oh, punctuating his questions by, by bouncing my nose on a very rough red dress. <laughs> and you wouldn't talk. Good old Mr. Crayfall. Don't be a fool, James. If I hadn't told him, I'd have come back talking like that. <laughs> Mr. Crayfall, you, you, you squealer. You keep quiet. I'm beginning to see you at the bottom of this. But I, I'm sorry, James, but what else could I do? Well, you could have died with your mouth shut like they do on the pictures. You're no longer an honorary member of the Black Hand Gang. <laughs> Go and see who is that, Jimmy. All right. Hey, what is it, Mr. Higginbottom? You just have to face the music. Well, get ready to draw the blinds. It might be the dead march. Who is it? It's me, the Alpha. You what? The Alpha. Well, hang on to the doorknob. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, I don't know what I'm going to tell you. Something terrible happened at the pictures tonight. Well, don't spoil it for me. I'm going tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> I, I don't mean in the film. I, I went out on that red racing bike, didn't I? Yes. Well, uh, have, have you not noticed anything? Yes, you still got me mother's daughters on. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you must know something's been going on. I've come home without you and Susan. Oh, for goodness sake. Close the door and stop bragging. There's nothing for it. I shall have to make a clean breast of it. Now, you just try to keep calm while I tell you. You see, somebody sent you by from the picture. Oh, I know all about that. But the, the, the commissioner said it was a middle-aged man with... You are. I know all about the bike. I'm worried about Mr. Higginbottom. Well, where did Mr. Higginbottom come in? Through that door any minute. <laughs> this wouldn't have happened if you hadn't pleaded with me to borrow that bike. Yeah, hey, wait a minute. It was your idea. Yeah, and that reminds me, when do I get my deposit back? You didn't bring the bike back, did you? No. Well, you've had your deposit. <laughs> well, can, can I have it back if the police find the bike? They won't find the bike and don't even know anything about it. Sure they do. I reported it. You've not been to the police. Of course I have. I went for a policeman as soon as I found out the bike was missing from the plaza. Oh, you're a proper Norman, you are. <laughs> what else could I do? I got a description of the man who pinched it. Middle-aged, nervous type, orange rimmed glasses, parts his hair in the middle. Hey, Dixon of Doc Green, come in here. Does he fit the description? Hey, hey, you try that. Don't look like the fella. I'll phone the police and get him a... Oh. <laughs> Mr. Crayford. Well? Mr. Crayford, we nearly had you in Dartmoor. <laughs> I beg your pardon. But somebody saw you taking a bite from the plaza and the police have got you a description. Hey, see who that is, Jimmy. Oh, can't somebody else go? It's bound to be Mr. Higginbottom this time. No, uh, Jimmy, you've got to face up to him sometime. Well, can't you put it off for a bit? He's about 90. <laughs> oh, go and answer the door, Jimmy. I'm coming. Good evening. Is this Clitheroe? Oh, heck, a copper at policeman. <laughs> Come in, sir. This is our house. I'm in Clitheroe. I see your parents. It's about the bicycle. Well, me mum's out. Uh, me granddad's in, but you want to see Mr. Crayford. Oh, well, I'd better see someone. Good evening, gentlemen. I'll call about the bicycle that was reported stolen. Oh, I did that. You mean you stole it? Yes. No, no, no. I reported it. Well, when I came out of the pictures, we were there, Susan, because we didn't go to the pictures, and when we got out, it was gone to us all the officer, but he didn't seem to understand. I think he must have been a foreigner. <laughs> You've got the same look. <laughs> Officer, allow me to clarify the situation. I took the bicycle from the plaza. Oh, now, and look, I know you weren't the one who stole it. But of course I wasn't. Well, you did think it really, Mr. Crayford. <laughs> Jimmy, be quiet. 
officer, this man had permission to take the bike. Ah, from you? No, not me. Were you there when he got permission? No, but I was told oh, to... Oh, that's hearsay, not evidence, sir. All right, sort it out for yourself. Uh, you, sir, did you give this man permission to take your bicycle? No. No, he printed it while I was at the pictures that we didn't see. I mean, he took it, but it's not my bike. The boy gave it to me. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. It's your bike, Sonny. No! Would you like to go back to the door and start from where you came in? Joe, stop here. Get this lock sorted out. Here, Bob, bring that bloke in. Keep the handcuffs on him. I don't know what you're all talking about. We caught the thief red-handed, still on the bicycle. Oh, here he is. Thanks, Bob. Oh. Now, watch it, you. Watch it, I'll tear him limb from limb. Oh, hey, you think Mr. Higginbottom. <laughs> You'll suffer, Cray, thought, when I get out of this. Officer, I don't handcuff the shot. Oh, don't worry. You won't get those off till we get him behind bars. You're all right, Mr. Cray, thought. Go and get a brick and rub it on his nose. <laughs> Look, can I have a last request? What do you mean? Just put that little brat's neck between my fingers for two minutes. Now, that'll do, Higginbottom. Now, Luke. It's time we put a stop to all this and got to the truth. Oh, give us another five minutes. I'm enjoying this. Well, <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me. Is there a Mr. Higginbottom here? Yes, that's him with the handcuffs on. He's well back. Oh. Oh, well, that'll help. I was told it was a bit violent. I've called about the bike. Well, what do you know about it? I'll tell you what I know. This fellow bought it from me on higher purchase and it's three months behind with his payment, so I'm taking it back. You mean I paid on the Higginbottom a shilling to buy a bike that wasn't his? There's no doubt he'll pay you back in the family tradition on the never, never. No, that's how I'm going to pay him. You're, you're going to pay Ozzy? Yes, a cloud deposit and a fortnight one every Friday. <laughs> In that recording of the Clitheroe Kid, you heard Pete Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Danny Ross, Diana Day, Tony Melody, Gordon Rollings, and Brian Schumann. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The programme, which was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe and produced by James Casey, starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I thought I'd come back in case you were still puzzled about the bike. Or he's got it again. As soon as Mr. Higginbottom got his ankles off, he went straight to Mr. Craythorpe and said, We'll settle this outside. And Mr. Craythorpe said, We settled it inside and paid the bike man the three months money. <laughs> the man was very pleased and he said he'd come and see Mr. Craythorpe next week because Mr. Higginbottom's three months behind with his washing machine as well. So... <laughs> Present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair's grandfather, Patricia Burke's mother, Diana Day's Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in What a Picnic! Susan, keep your head still or I'll never get these curlers in. Oh, sorry, Mother, but I seem to have been sitting here for ages. Well, it was your idea. Having a home perm, and on a Saturday morning when I'm up to my eyes in work. Well, I want to look really nice for Billy this weekend. Well, just turn your head. Come on, that, that, that's it, that's it. Is Billy coming with us on the picnic tomorrow? Oh, yes. He's quite looking forward to it. He says that after being cooped up in an office all week, he could use some fresh air. Yeah, so could I. <sighs> this perming stuff isn't exactly eau de cologne. Mum, I want you to ask you... Ooh, what a shocking pull. <laughs> Jimmy, that'll do. What did you come in here for anyway? I wanted to know if I can go swimming tomorrow when we go on the picnic. If you don't behave yourself, there'll be no picnic for you. That's right, Mother. You put him in his place. Yes, all right, Susan. Leave it to me, will you please? That's right, Mum. You put her in her place. <laughs> Try the dustbin. <laughs> you 
<laughs> cheeky little horror. I won't do any more of this and you'll stay home tomorrow. Oh, but, Mum... Don't answer back. But, um... I don't want to hear another word from you. Is that clear? Oh, there you are, Jim. You get me the stamps from the post office. Hey, Jimmy, I'm talking to you. What about the stamps? Why don't you answer me? I can't. I've got to keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> What's going on here? I told him to keep quiet. And if he doesn't behave himself, he won't be going with us tomorrow. There's not much use me going anyway. What do you mean? Well, you're all grown-ups except me. I'll have nobody to play with. Well, we'll play with you. Hmm, you said that last time, and look what happened. As soon as we got there, Mam and Mr Craythorpe found somewhere quiet to have a nap. Susan and Billy found some thick bushes, and you found the red lion. <laughs> Jimmy, that'll do. All right, Pat, all right. Jimmy, if uh, we invited one of your little friends along to the picnic, you'd have plenty of fun then, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, but I'd have more fun if you invited me little enemy, my pal Ozzie. <laughs> well, what do you say, Pat? All right, then. I suppose he should have a playmate with him. There you are, Susan. They're all in. You can go now. Thanks, Mother. You'll come out this this afternoon, then? Yes, I will, love. Thanks. I'll just go upstairs. Allow me to open the door, Lady Clitheroe. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Not at all. Do call again to have your hair done, madam. We're always glad to see you. You're such a change from all those poodles. <laughs> <laughs> you and your silly jokes. So we'll leave it to you uh, to invite Ozzy then, Jimmy. All right, but we'd need plenty of food, ma'am. You know what it's like for eating. You can get four sandwiches down while you're putting the salt on your old bald egg. <laughs> oh, you don't have to come out with them. Well, Pat, I'll be away now. Are you going out, Father? Uh, yes, I'm going to get my hair cut. I've left it a bit too long. A bit too long? If it grows much further down your back, you'll look like you're wearing your spur the wrong way round. <laughs> Father, you'd better take Jimmy with you. He's overdue for a haircut as well. Oh, Mum, you know I hate going to the barbers. I'll stop here and you can give me a quick once round with the pudding mason. <laughs> Don't be silly. Off you go with your granddad. <laughs> Uh, what's the matter, Jim? Uh, put your paper down a minute. There's a man here going to have his hair cut. Oh, what about it? He's as bald as a football bladder. <laughs> no, Jimmy. He's I... got more on his eyebrows than he's got on his head. <laughs> Look, he's going to have a shave. Next, please. Right, Jim. Off you go now. Into the middle chair. No, oh, you go, Grandad. I don't like that fella. Why not? Well, he talks so daft. Just because he comes from Liverpool, he calls everybody whacker. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? It reminds me of our headmaster, the biggest whacker of the lot. Next, <laughs> please. Jimmy, come on, get in the chair. Oh, all right, Grandad. But if he starts his funny talk, I'll kick his kneecaps. Oh, there you are, whacker. I thought you was never coming. Come on, get in the chair. All right. Hey, can I ask you a question? Oh, what is it? Well, you see the bald chap in the next chair? Yes. Well, when he has his hair cut... Do you use clippers or just a quick rub round with a sheet of sandpaper? <laughs> now, look here, sonny. We're very busy this morning. How do you want your hair cutting? Oh, just trim it up at the back. And when you've finished, I don't want any of that hair cream on. Why? There's nothing wrong with that cream. Except the smell. It's got a very nice smell. I oh, know, that's just it. I'm captain of the Black Hand Gang. I can't go around smelling like a flower bed. <laughs> look, just keep your head still. Yes. You see... When you're captain of the Black Hand Gang, you've got to be careful. Charlie Thompson was our last captain, and he got slung out. What for? He broke the most important rule of the gang. He was seen in broad daylight with a girl. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Being seen with a Judy? <laughs> you know, gang, that's a bigger crime than washing your neck. Me <laughs> what? Oh, it wouldn't last five minutes as captain if they saw me with a girl. Do you know what they'd do to me? No, what? They'd stick a goldfish bowl on me head, two skyrockets up me jersey, and launch me into outer space. <laughs> oh, that's charming. Morning, everybody. Oh, uh, hello, Higginbotham. Morning, I see. Morning, Professor. Oh, 
Oh, there's my pal Ozzy. I want a word with him. Hey, Ginger Nut, I want to talk to you. Look, sit still. Get back in the chair. But it's my pal Ozzy. That's him eating the meat pie. Look at the size of it. All you can see are his ears sticking out at the sides. <laughs> You'll have no ears if you don't sit still. <laughs> Behave yourself. But, Grandad, I want to tell Ozzy about our picnic. Picnic? We're having it tomorrow afternoon. Do you want to come? Mm, yeah, please. Right, be at our house at two o'clock. Do you like salmon sandwiches? Mmm, yeah. Well, uh, bring a loaf of bread and your fishing rod. <laughs> Here, Aiken Butter, will you get this laddie else from under me feet? Keep your shirt on, mate. It wouldn't be in your way if it wasn't for this young whelp, Clitheroe. You're in a bad temper, aren't you, Mr Higginbottom? Did the rent man call and catch you in? <laughs> I don't want any cheek from you, look. Jimmy, just keep quiet. Look, will you all go and sit down? All right. But I'll tell you one thing, Sinclair. If that young brat were my son, he'd be sorry for himself. I know, I'd have Ozzy for a brother. <laughs> for a cup of tea, Mrs Peters. No, thanks, Mrs Clitheroe. We must be going. But it's very nice of you to offer to look after Shirley tomorrow. Oh, it'll be a pleasure. You can't take a young girl with you when you're visiting sick relations. And she'll be company for Jimmy on the picnic. And you'll like that now, won't you, Shirley? Oh, yes, Mummy. I think Jimmy's very funny sometimes. But he, he doesn't seem to think much of girls. <laughs> oh, all boys are like that, dear. Don't you worry. You'll have a good time with Jimmy. He can be quite a little gentleman when he wants to. That flipping barber. He ought to be in Australia shearing sheep. Uh, Jimmy. <laughs> he hasn't left me anything to comb. Talk about sin, Jimmy, with a taper. I think he went round with a blow lamp. <laughs> Jimmy, we've got visitors. What? Hello, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Mrs. Peters. Hello, Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> Shirley. Jimmy, I've got a surprise for you. You know you wanted a playmate on the picnic. Yes, I've just seen Ozzy. Well, Shirley's coming with us. And I've told him that... You what? <laughs> I've told Mrs Peters you'll be only too pleased to look after her. I hope you don't mind me coming with you, Jimmy. Of course I do. Uh, don't. <laughs> I'm delighted. Just what I wanted. A girlfriend for company. Do you think it'll rain? <laughs> I really must go now, Mrs. Clitheroe. Mr. Peters and I will be back about nine tomorrow night. We'll call here for Shirley. That's fine. I'll see you to the door. Thanks. Goodbye, Jimmy. Uh, ta-ra. See you tomorrow, Jimmy, at the picnic. Oh, yes. I can't wait for Monday morning. <laughs> Come along, dear. Coming, Mummy. Bye, Jimmy. Till tomorrow. Ta-ra, Shirley. Oh, heck. Trust me, Mum, to get me into trouble. Still, what can you expect? She was a girl herself once. Hey, uh, Jimmy. Grandad, Shirley's coming with us on the picnic. Oh, now that'll be nice. But I've got to look after her. Me, playing blooming nursemaid to a gym slip. <laughs> now, I don't know what you're grumbling about. Shirley's very charming. Well, that's fixed. Oh, Father, Shirley's coming to the picnic tomorrow. So I've gathered from Jim here. He doesn't seem to want her company, though. Well, that's just too bad. It's not two hours ago he was complaining he'd have nobody to play with. But Shirley's a girl. You don't play with girls. You make faces at them through the school railings. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ozzy's dad just coming out of the house. Hello, Mr Higginbottom. Oh, it's you again. What do you want now? I want to see Ozzy, please. Is he in? No, he isn't. He's gone to the chip shop. Why, is your vinegar bottle empty again? <laughs> I'll belt you in a minute, look. Now, what do you want him for? I want to tell him not to bother about tomorrow. The picnic's off. Off? It was only an hour ago you said it was on. I know, but, um, me granddad's just been reckoning up how much it'll cost and he says we can't afford it. What? It can't cost all that much. Well, it's the food. Now Ozzy's coming, we'll have to buy two dozen ham sandwiches, ten sausage rolls, six cream cakes, three pork pies, and that's just for him. <laughs> no, I'm in a hurry, so cut out the comedy. You say the picnic's definitely off? Yes, I I'm afraid so. You Is that your James? 
Oh, blimey, here comes Casanova Craythorpe. Now, just on my way to your house, James. Oh, good morning, Higginbottom. Morning, Craythorpe. Hey. Hey, you're getting a bit daring, aren't you? Yellow waistcoat with a bowler hat. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry I can't emulate the fashion of present company. Spotted muffler with a dirty cap. <laughs> I'm wearing this muffler because I have to. Oh, why? He's got no shirt on. <laughs> I'll do time for you yet, look. If you want to know, I've got to have this scarf because I've got a sore throat. Well, why don't you give your throat a rest? <laughs> James, I must get along to your house. Your mother wants to talk to me about the picnic tomorrow. Picnic? Yes, I believe your son Oswald is joining us. Uh, Mr. Craythorpe. That's funny. I thought the picnic was off. Oh, no. I spoke to Mrs. Clitheroe not five minutes ago on the telephone. We're all going in my car, so the picnic can't be off. No, but I am blabbermouth. Come here, you. <laughs> now, then, that was all a pack of lies you just told me. Oh, Mr. Higginbottom, let go of me arm. You're bigger than me. Yes, you bully. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Yes, like Mr. Craythorpe. Exactly. No, I... I'd be delighted. Now, now, keep away, you lout. Have you gone mad? Starting a common brawl on the public highway? Yes, Mr. Higginbottom, you can't do that. Take him in the house and fight him in there. <laughs> James, will you stop talking like that? Oh, out of me way, the pair of you. And don't worry, Clitheroe. Ozzy won't be coming to your fancy picnic. Now, clear off. I'm in a hurry. Come along, James. There's no point in trying to reason with him. In his present mood, it would be tempting Providence just to ask him the time. If he's in a hurry, we know the time. Opening time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very true. Uh, but you know, James, I still don't understand what all that was about. Oh, I'm in trouble because of Shirley. If I had him here, I'd shoot the fellow that wrote that song. What song? Thank heaven for little girls. <laughs> So you see, ma'am, we were walking down the street and we met Ozzy's dad, didn't we, Mr. Craythorpe? Uh, yes, that's right. And he told us, us the sad news, didn't he, Mr. Craythorpe? Uh, well, I suppose so. What sad news? Well, well you see, ma'am, it's like this. I'll answer it, pet. Ozzy won't be able to come to the picnic because he's got uh, uh, spots, uh, uh, measles. Uh, hasn't he, Mr. Craythorpe? Uh, well, really, I think I should be going. But you saw him in the barber shop not two hours ago. Surely he didn't have measles then. Oh, well, they came on all of a sudden. Uh, you know, uh, galloping measles. <laughs> Stop talking nonsense. Galloping measles. Now, what is wrong with Ozzy? Here, Jimmy. Higginbotham's on the phone. Now, what have you been saying to him? Well, uh, what did he say, I said? <laughs> He's gone mad, shouting something about his son Ozzy not being good enough for the high and mighty Clitheroes. Jimmy? I've been listening to your nonsense long enough. What have you been up to? Well, uh, you see, um, it was nothing, really. Come on out with it now. You're always causing trouble with Mr Higginbottom. What happened? Uh, I think I'd better explain. I saw James talking to Mr Higginbottom, so I went over and mentioned the picnic, not knowing what James had already said. I'd no sooner told Higginbottom that the picnic was on when he went berserk. So it was you who caused all the trouble? <laughs> no. I did nothing to arouse his temper. You did? You told him he was wearing a dirty cap? Uh, well, uh, yes, I did, but I've... Now, uh, look, we haven't time for a conference. The man's still on the phone. I'll speak to him, Father. If Ozzy can come tomorrow, he'll be welcome. Theodore. What was all that bother about when I, when I was answering the phone? Oh, I don't know. I, I lost track of the argument when we got on to galloping measles. Galloping measles? What are you blathering about? Well, it all started when James and I... Oh, Mr. Sinclair, it's all a lot of nonsense. Let's forget it. No, I insist on hearing what you were talking about. It's no use, Mr. Craythorpe. You'll just have to tell him. Tell him what? That pack of lies you told me, Mother. <laughs> Well, Pat, this is what I call a picnic. The weather's perfect, we picked a lovely spot, and you certainly did us proud with the food, my dear. Thanks, Father. Are you glad you came, Shirley? Oh, yes, I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, Jimmy? Yes? Shall we make some more daisy chains? No, thanks. I couldn't stand any more excitement. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, don't be rude. 
go swimming with Ozzy. I told you, you can both go swimming when your food has had time to digest and not before. In that case, Ozzy won't be ready till Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you do say some funny things. I don't know how you think of them. Who I'm all there with me cough drops. <laughs> Yeah, Pat, where's Theodore? He's gone to get his camera out of the car. We're all going to have a photograph taken. Here he is now. Well, now, if you could all arrange yourselves in a group, I should get a good one here. Where do you want us, Theodore? Uh, I suggest we have the grown-ups sitting down and the children standing behind. Uh, Mr Sinclair, could you move a little to your left? Oh, very well. Right, Theodore? No, no not right. Left. I know. When I said right, I was asking you if I was far enough left. Uh, uh, sit there, Mr Sinclair. Oh! What's the matter with you, Ozzy? You've just sat on his pie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, how, how's this, Theodore? Uh, let me see. Uh, no, no, it's that tree in the distance. It's going to look as though it's growing out of your head. Move a bit forward, Father. There you are, about there. Oh, he, he can't sit there, Mum. Why not? Well, Grandad's got his kilt on, and that's where I found the ant's nest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do hear Theodore. Uh, yes, that's fine. Now, James, you stand there next to Shirley. You what? No, closer to her than that, James. Uh, James, do move up. Come on, you can get much closer. <laughs> no, thanks, Shirley. I'm all right here. But Mr. Craythorpe wants to get you in the picture. Yes, and Master Higginbottom wants to get me in the doghouse. <laughs> uh, right, everybody. Now, smile, please. Oh, oh, just a moment. Susan and Billy aren't here. We must have them in the photograph. Well, they were here a minute ago. I wonder where they've gone. Can't you guess? Jim, <laughs> just stop that sort of talk and go on off and see if you can find them. Oh, all right, Mum. Can I come with you, Jimmy? <laughs> no, don't bother, Shirley. You stop it here and dig some worms for Ozzy. <laughs> He's hungry again. Jimmy, I, sh <laughs> I shan't tell you any more. It's all right, Shirley. Go with him if you want to. Well, I don't want to go if I'm not wanted. Oh, come on, then. Any minute now, we'll have the waterworks. <laughs> Jimmy, for the last time... I'm going, Mum. I think they went round here, Shirley. Jimmy, have I done something that's annoyed you? Um, no, not really. But you've been avoiding me all day. I thought maybe you didn't like me. It's not that. It's Ozzy and the gang. Oh, I see. You're not supposed to bother with girls. No, especially me. I'm the captain. But, Jimmy, surely there's no harm in talking to a girl. Shh, keep quiet. Well, if you're going to be rude... Shh, it's not that. Listen, behind those bushes. Oh, Susan, I'm glad we came today. So am I, Billy. Mm. <laughs> Jimmy, what are they doing? Chasing butterflies. <laughs> if I lean over this bush, I, I might see him. Ooh, oh, hey, what, what's the matter? It's a ghost bush. <laughs> I'll be round the corner. Are you comfortable, Susan? Mm, yes, Billy. Jimmy, we shouldn't be standing here watching them like this. You're right. Nick back and get Mr. Craythorpe's camera. <laughs> No, I mean, it's not nice. It's like watching a film that you're not old enough to see. You're very pretty. Do you mean that, Billy? Yes. I think you're lovely. Poor Billy, I think he's got a touch of sun. <laughs> I'd better get him away so he can have his photo taken while he's still breathing. Now, break it up, you two. You want him back at the camp. What? All right, Billy, get that raspberry jam off your face. <laughs> what are you doing here? Bird watching. <laughs> what a pair! Susan Sparrowlegs and Little Billy Cuckoo. <laughs> Mum, why can't Ozzy and me go swimming on our own? Because Shirley wants to swim as well, and so she's coming with you. But she'll be no good with us. As well as swimming, we're going to go running, jumping and climbing trees. Well, what about it? She's only a weak little girl. Our games are too rough for her. She'd even get tired out playing marbles. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to stand for any more nonsense. Shirley's going swimming with you and that's that. All right, then, but don't be surprised if we bring her back on a stretcher. Are you ready for the race, Ozzy? Yes, I'm ready. Jimmy, can I be in the race? 
You can if you want to, but we're going as far as that bridge and back. And it's a long way for a girl. Well, I'd like to have a go, if you don't mind. Oh, well, I shan't be seeing you for a while. Cheerio. Ready? Set. Go! Give me a hand, I'll help you onto the bank. <laughs> what happened to you? Did you get cramp? <laughs> no, I didn't. You might have told me you were a mermaid's daughter. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's bound to be other things you can do better than me. Yes, you're right. Hey, have you ever won any medals for running? Oh, no. Good, come on. I'll race you across this field. Well, aren't you going to wait for Ozzy? Look, he's still in the water. Oh, he'll be all right. He's brought his rubber duck. <laughs> well, as soon as you're ready, I'll race you to that gate and back. I'm sure I shan't be as lucky this time. Here I am, Jimmy. Oh, you are out of breath. It's impossible. I picked these flowers while I was waiting for you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I thought you said you hadn't won any medals for running. Oh, I haven't. Only cups. <laughs> Have you won anything for running? Yes, when I won the egg and spoon race, they let me keep the egg. <laughs> Look. See that big oak tree? Mm -hmm. I'll bet I can climb it to the top quicker than you can. All right. Go on, and I'll give you a leg up to start you off. Jimmy, Jimmy, it's a lovely view up here. Aren't you coming any higher? I can't, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck? I've got my braces caught round a branch. <laughs> <laughs> well, try wriggling yourself free. I've tried. Every time I move, another button goes. <laughs> I don't know whether to climb down and risk getting arrested or stay here and build a nest. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, hang on and I'll come down. Now, keep quite still. Don't move whatever you do. Well, James, I must say I've had a wonderful afternoon with my camera. I've been taking snapshots all over the place. James, you don't seem very interested. I'm not. I'm fed up. <laughs> oh, of course. I've heard about the way little Shirley kept getting the better of you. Who told you? Your friend Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't tell the Black Hand Gang about it. <laughs> He'd better not. I've given him a penknife to keep him quiet. <laughs> yes, I believe so. Together with six glass alleys, two toffee apples and a frog. <laughs> well, the telltale tit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He also said he would have demanded your rabbit hutch as well, but it needs a new bottom. Wait till I get my foot near him. He'll need a new one as well. <laughs> well, this is a surprise, Theodore. Fancy you winning a prize in the photo competition. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I haven't seen the paper myself, but apparently the winning entries are on the back page. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim's just going to get the papers in the other room. Do you know which of your photographs won the prize? Uh, no, I submitted several of the snaps I took at our little picnic last week. Yes. I believe I shall be getting two guineas. <laughs> well, I hope you still speak to us when you're rich. I've got the paper. Oh, uh, right. Turn over to the back page, James. Oh, look at all these photos. Hey, there's one that... Oh, flipping heck. What's the matter, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> it's Theodore's winning entry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one I took just after James fell out of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there's little Shelley holding him up. Yes, and she's got both her blinking arms round me. And the gang will see it. Mr. Craythorpe, where's your camera? It's at home. Why? Go and get it. I want Grandad to take a picture of you and me for next week's competition. A picture of you and me? Yes, we'll call it Small Boy Murders Big Ape. <laughs> and say, don't some mothers have them? <laughs> Recording of the Little Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Diana Day, Peter Goodright, Tony Melody, Carol Gardner, and Joan Sharp. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. 
The programme is written by Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I thought you might like to know I'm still captain of the Black Hand Gang. They saw the photograph, and when we had our next meeting, they voted Ozzy as captain. It made me sick. Kept coming up to me and saying, I'm in charge. <laughs> anyway, I fixed him. Yesterday, my mum invited Shirley and Ozzy around to tea, and later on, I left them together on the front room settee and got the gang to come round and peep through the window. <laughs> and that was the end of lover boy Higginbottom. <laughs> well, it was bound to be when the gang saw Ozzy kneeling at Shirley's feet. What they didn't know was that I'd thrown a quarter of jelly babies all over the floor. <laughs> Ta-da! We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair's grandfather, Patricia Burke's mother, Diana Day's Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in... Jump for the Girl! Up in the morning when the sun begins to shine at four or five or six o'clock in the good old summer time. Well, now that's funny. Quarter past seven. We usually deliver the paper by this time. Oh well, I'll just have to wait until he comes before I find out what the world has in store. You can go back to bed, Granddad. You've not put the old egg paintings up. Jimmy, I didn't hear you get out of bed. You didn't give myself a chance. While I was fumbling about for my slippers, you were snoring your head off. Well, I don't suppose it'll do you any harm to get up early once in a while. Mind? That'd be a shock to your mother when she goes into your bedroom and finds you missing. Sure, she'll think you've left home. That's what I'll feel like doing if the postman doesn't hurry up and bring my letter. So that's it. You're waiting for the postman. Well, what have you been writing away for now? Have you forgotten? The results of the camping competition are out this morning, and it said in the paper that the winner will be notified by post. Uh, Jimmy, you, 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 you mustn't rely on the postman coming here. There's, there's such a thing as counting chickens, you know. Well, why doesn't he deliver his letters and count his chickens afterwards? Uh, Jimmy, no, you, you don't get it. No, but I will do when the postman gets here. <laughs> Now, you've been very foolish building your hopes up like this. Just because you were lucky enough to get your first entry correct in the paper, it doesn't mean to say you win the last one. You always make it more difficult. He's got a lot of letters in his hands. Well, it doesn't say that for you. I only want one. He's just going up to his and bottom his door. It'll be a bill. <laughs>
that you have been successful in winning the title entry in the championship contest. Granddad, a word for me! I'll show you a word. Well done, Jimmy. What does the letter say? It says I've won. Granddad, you can help me to put the tent up when it comes, and you can have a sleep on the camp bed, and I'll make you a cup of tea out of my private stove. What's going on, Father? You'd better come down, Pat. Your son's won the camping contest. Well, that's a relief from the noise. It was going on. I thought you said the house on fire. Mum, can I put my tent up in the backyard when it comes? What are you talking about? Who's this letter? Listen, you. There's a tent, a camp bed, a stove, a water carrier, a canvas, some bags to put it in. Yeah, wait a minute. What about the second paragraph? Yes, I think there's one of those, too. And there's a in now. And I'm talking about the second part of this letter. It says, however, as there are 125 all correct entries, the editor has decided to hold an eliminating competition. So the one winner may receive the prize offered. Details of the competition are given on the enclosed form. You mean you're not going to send me the tent? I told you it was too early for the cock to start crowing. Oh, we're back to the chickens again. <laughs> You've won. It's over 124 others. Well, what does it mean? It means so far you've got half a share in three tent pegs. <laughs> oh, very funny. There's no need to laugh all over your face, Granddad. Oh, <laughs> but you, you must admit there's a funny side of it. Yes, well, would you mind turning it the other way? <laughs> now, Jimmy, there's no need to be rude. You've done very well to get as far as the competition as you have done. And you've still got a chance to win, although now it'll be more a matter of good luck. You see, it says here that you have to write a hundred words on the best way to light a campfire. It gives three alternative ways which you've got to put in the correct order. And the first entry opened by the editor will win the prize. Oh, well, I've had it then. It could just be my luck to get right on the bottom of the pile. Good morning, everyone. Did the person have anything this morning? Best thing he could have had was a lion. <laughs> Beware of the dog. Well, poor, we haven't got a dog. Don't worry. First time of a postman, I'll box. <laughs> if Mr. Fido has had his sling, I wonder if he'd tell me whether there was a letter for me. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. Um, uh, one registered. I signed for it. You wrote this, too. Well, I'll have to find out what I was signing for. <laughs> Mother, it's for the airline company. Oh, what's the reason, eh? Well, oh, it's just as I expected. They say I'm too young to be an air hostess. They just return my references. Well, don't worry, love. You've got an interview on Thursday for that nice job in the newspaper office. Yes, but I'm disappointed. Just think, I shan't be able to go to the and Rome and Baghdad. But it's not my lucky day at all. Why? <laughs> Susan, you know, I'm rather pleased it's worked out this way. I think you'll do very well in a newspaper office. After all, secretary to the editor is an interesting job for a girl of your age. Wait a minute. Which editor is this? If you must know, it's Evening Echo. Just the editor who's trying to do me out of the camping ship. <laughs> Jimmy, don't start worrying about that again. Now, be a good boy while I go and make the bread. Oh, Susan, could I ask you something? I am not lending you any money. I don't want any. I was just thinking, if you got this job working for the editor, and the editor had some letters, you could take them into him, couldn't you? I suppose that would be one of my duties. And if you wanted to put one particular letter on top, you could you, couldn't you? I could, but I don't see what you're doing at. Susan, you've got to get that job. I'll speak to Charlie Thompson, he'll fix it. Well, what's Charlie Thompson got to do with the evening echo? He's one of their key men. He tells them up on the street corner. <laughs> Out of this. I don't need your help. Besides, I happen to have a boyfriend who's on the staff of the Echo. Not Billy Parker. And what's the matter with Billy Parker? If I had a day off too, I'd tell you. <laughs> Billy has a very good job with the paper. What? He only took it because he had a big mouth. What do you mean? He gets all the envelopes in a line, and as he gets back with them, Billy sticks his tongue out. <laughs> Standing here listening to your nonsense. I've got more important things to do. Yes, you have. You've got to get that job and smuggle my empty form into the editor's office on top of the pile. Now let's have a look at that letter. Write a hundred words on the best way to light a campfire, putting the following three methods in the correct order. Well, there's only one way to find that out. Where's the matches? There'll be a hot time in the old backyard tonight. <laughs> If you talk like 
rain, so I put a one to get them late. I realize that. But I can't find pigs that aren't there. I'm not a magician, you know. <laughs> no, without bundle of twigs, you look more like Cinderella's fairy godmother. <laughs> Bend over, I'll bounce these tricks on your pumpkin. <laughs>
your mother's cigar. Hi, Mr. Crinkle. Here we are. What's the damage? Oh, I'm afraid they're quite ruined. We have to buy some new ones. New, will you mean? And that supply was your idea. Who lit it? Because I might cause an accident with matches. Well, I know, but... but... Besides, I'm not going into a shop to ask for a pair of them. <laughs> I was in charge. I only hope after all this, you're going to win this footling competition. I can't lose. Now I've found out the best stuff for you to fire. You can write it down, I'll copy it, and Susan will see me let his first one to be read. <laughs> will I now? Anyway, how can Susan do that? Well, she's getting a job on the paper. You need it to stay in paper? Yes. In that case, you can't possibly win. If Susan is on the paper, none of her relations can even enter the competition. What? You'll be barred from the thing. Oh, well, she's going to be barred from that job. I'm going to see my mum as soon as she gets back. Come on in with me. Uh, no, no, no. I've got enough trouble on my hands with your mother's nether garment. Cloudy, cloudy custard. Well, I'll stop her myself. Yes, yes. I had to worry about the lost the things. Can I drive for you, Mum? What have you done wrong? Nothing, Mum. Well, let me see in your head. You must be sick me for something. Oh, right. There's no need to be funny. Anyway, why isn't our Susan doing it? Well, she's in the lounge talking to Elsie. She came in for a jug of water to pour on uh, the garden. Is that what I wanted? I couldn't understand what he was on about, so I gave him a glass of lemonade. <laughs> Keep Susan along. I want to help me tidy up. She's always dodging the housework. Hey, that's it. That's what? Mm-hmm. Our Susan will have no time at all for housework if she goes on the newspaper. She'll be late all every night. Why? Because they always are. I've seen them on the pictures. The secretary dashing out for coffee while the crime reporter waits to hear if the cops have caught the killer. Don't be so silly. This is a very good job, and Susan's very keen on it. She can't be an air hostess. Why doesn't she try for that again? Because she's too young. Well, she looks old. If she went to see him without a war paint on, they'd call her granny. All right, all right, all right, that's enough. Hey, uh, how did she know where to write for the air hostess job? It's advertised in the papers. Look, will you let it drop? Susan's having an interview on Thursday and that's that. We'll see. Don't her mum yet. Uh, all right, mum, I'll just go and have a look at the um, comic page in the paper. Now, where's his ground? I've left it. Ah, it. Now, let's see the job. What did she to ask two of them? Daily help. That's no use. She's no help to anybody. What's <laughs> this? Nanny required for two children. Ooh, the kids want to go. <laughs> Exactly. Then you burn them. No. What do you mean you're talking to wake up all poop? 
long live. I think I should stay and explain properly to your mother. Well, while you're here, you can do something for Susan. What? She's applied for a job as an air hostess. So could you write her a reference? I? Yes, you know, say how clever she is. Lies like that and sign it. Sign it. Harold Macmillan. Well, I shall certainly write a reference. But I shall find it in my own name. But you know it's you. <laughs> I'll wait until Susan gets here. That's no good. I've got to catch the post with the letter I've written. Uh, she's written. Oh, very well. Where's the note paper? Over in that drawer. You carry on, Mr. Crater. I'll get Sam's at the door. Susan up with his air hostess job. She'll be happy, I'll be happy, and everything will be gone with the moonlight. Hello again. Oh, heck, the first weed. Hey, well, what do you think? Yeah, I told you, Susan, I didn't mind her working at the newspaper office with Billy Parker. Oh, no. It's a day. Uh, what do you think he said? You're a proper nun, and you are. You will listen to the KO, will you? <laughs> The way I refuse to talk. Refuse? Mm-hmm. 
But after all the trouble I took, he did not have the courage to call or even write to me, but to get a third party to telephone a very curse refusal. Someone who was obviously intoxicated to boot. So who did he mean? I think it was the only sound, Joe. Have a family and be heard. Listen, it was my idea. You little horror, I'll... You leave it to me, Jimmy. You're going to feel the weight of my hands. Now, don't do anything till you hear about the job I've got to. What job? Air hostess. I can't speak with Mr. Grayson. Help. What's this, Grayson? I first said to use the reference I gave Susan when she wrote yesterday. I wrote, not her. I don't believe a word of it. Neither do I. Come on, up those stairs. But the monk's coming here any minute. He said she can score tomorrow. Perhaps he was on the phone. Well, perhaps we should wait and see if James is right. Did the man on it since I could have the job? Yes, as soon as it comes again, I'll have to deal with men. The passengers, you mean? Oh, it's true, that's marvelous. And you'll be pleased with me? Oh, yes. Well, will you do me a favor when you're flying all over the world? Anything. Go lost. Mother, wouldn't it be wonderful if I get the job? I don't know, love. I don't like the idea of losing you. No, Pat. The fledglings have to leave the nest sometimes. Come in, Mr. Silver. This is our season. Good evening, sir. Well, that's real classy. The boys will go for that car jazz. Ah, Mrs. Silver. Hi, honey. And this is my father. Hiya, Pop. No, I'm Craig. He's a father. And he's no father. I went to her and explained to the editor that Alfie wasn't going to 